Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, um, for coming back on time from lunch. Um, as we have uh, quite a lot of the schedule to get through this afternoon, I'll just hand it over to our chair, Lynn Sentamore, to start. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Changatai. Um, one uh, quick administrative question I had um, over the lunch break. We are using the electronic speaking queue. There are one or two individuals that cannot use it. Um, so when, and they're in the room here, when their flag goes up, I slot them into the speaking queue at the end of the current electronic speaking queue, just so everybody both in the room and remotely understands that we are operating the fair rotating um, speaking queue. Um, <clears throat> just before lunch, we had agreed a process in terms of proceeding with the workshops where we were going to look at um, a, a number of workshops for further review to see if they should be um, pulled into the formal program. Specifically, we were going to look at workshops that were um, uh, proposed by governments, and that list was sent around by the Secretariat uh, this morning. I intend to start with that list in a moment. But I asked the Secretariat also if they would put the um, criteria up here, because the criteria by which we judged these workshops should be the same as the criteria by which we judged the previous workshops. If, in fact, they're found wanting against some of those criteria, this is our opportunity to say we can address that, and this is how we're going to address that. But the, the judgment should be against the same set of, of criteria. Um, <clears throat> the Secretariat also expanded the wild card list that was sent out last night to include those workshops that were suggested from the conversation here in the room. Um, we're hopeful that we caught everything. Um, Eleanor and I did this over lunch, but we may not have. Um, so in particular, we went and looked through the, um, the geographic distribution, um, the IPv6, um, um, I'm forgetting what some of the others were, but we think we've captured that now in an updated wildcard list. And is that wildcard list still in the Google Doc? And does the MAG have the link to the updated doc? Uh, Hi, everyone. Oh, what's working? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Can you hear me? The microphone is working? Okay, great. Um, so we have updated the wildcard list, uh, and we will share it with you shortly. We have it in two formats. It's in that uh, Google Sheet, which um, I think Lynn shared last night with all MAG members. Um, and uh, on request of some other members, we also have an Excel version of um, the wildcard list, which is now updated, and we'll share both versions shortly. And I think a new standard operating procedure ought to be, if we're going to do Google Docs, that we also need to do some other um, format. I think there are some <clears throat> some um, MAG members that just um, behind firewalls and things can't can't access them. So um, up on the um, on the slide uh, here in the room, and should be projected in the Adobe Connect room as well. We actually have the um, criteria by which we were actually meant to evaluate the workshops. So I'll just remind everybody again, they were the relevance. Is it relevant to the Internet Governance and to the IGF main theme for this year? Content, is the proposal well thought out and does it cover enough aspects of the issue of interest? And is the main Internet Governance issue clearly spelled out? Background papers with the aim of informing the content are welcomed but are not a screening requirement. Workshop proposer and speaker diversity. Are the proposers first time proposers? Do they come from a developing country or an underrepresented region? Is the list of speakers diverse in terms of gender, geography, stakeholder group, policy perspective, and or persons with disabilities? Are the speakers qualified to tackle the topic? Are there, are there speakers from developing countries? And are there speakers or organizers who are first time proposers? And the final criteria was the format. Is the session description consistent with the format listed? And I think we were also um, hopeful that we would get um, some variety in the formats as well, not just uh, workshops and, and uh, roundtables and, and panel sessions. So we have um, at least one person in the queue here. 
Um, I'm going to ask Eleanor in the background to actually put up the list of government proposals because those are the ones that we will start going through in a substantive manner. Um, Maji, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I have to point out that in this morning I have never agreed to discuss on the basis of the current top 72 uh, proposals and go into the specific discussion of specific wild cards directly. If we have any chance for wild cards, these wild cards, these uh, chance opportunities should be given to uh, uh, those regions which is uh, extremely disadvantaged, rather than from particular uh, groups like uh, government or uh, wild cards proposed by, by MAC members. For me, these proposals are irrelevant. Thank you. Uh, thank you, G. Um, in fact, we did take forward that requirement, and on the expanded wild card list, in other words, working from the starter document last night, we did pull in um, proposals from underrepresented regions, and in particular, we went in and pulled forward proposals from Asia. Um, there were not any um, specific proposals which had been put forward here in the room, but working with the Secretariat, we went forward and pulled those, those through. So those should be on the um, expanded wild card list. Now, I haven't had a chance to look at that <laughs> document yet because I've just been in, in several meetings over the, the lunch period. But if there are some more that you think need to be reflected there, um, very happy to put them there. What we would request is that we have the specific workshop proposal numbers so that we can, can pull them in uh, quickly and easily. Uh, so, G, you have the floor. Um, I, um, I need uh, some help from the Secretariat. Can the Secretariat uh, give me a list of the proposals from Asia Pacific and uh, uh, among, um, among them which uh, has been selected and which are out, so that I can work on that? Thank you. Yes. Um, one of the things, I'll ask Eleanor to take the floor in a moment, but I actually asked her to go through and create a sort of all those proposals that had Asia Pacific as the region of the proposer um, and to pull those together into a separate document or a separate sort um, specifically so that we could look at that. Um, Eleanor? Hi. Yes. So um, what Lynn is saying is uh, correct. We did um, pull out um, all the proposals from the Asia Pacific region and in particular highlighted in an updated wildcard list the next top five graded proposals from Asia Pacific uh, and indicating which of those also um, were coming from first time proposers um, because as a general principle we also want to bolster submissions from uh, people who have not proposed before. So um, you will find that in the, the updated wildcard list. And separately, we also have a document with all the Asia Pacific, uh, Pacific uh, proposals just uh, to review for reference. Thank you, Eleonora. Does that meet your need, G? That one that's up there is just the government list, I believe. Yes. Yeah. So the list you're actually looking for is elsewhere in in uh, mail or is it is it was it sent to the you mag list as mail. well? Yeah, it was sent to the mag list. Mm -hmm. So you should have an email sent to the mag list, which actually has the information that Eleanor just outlined. In this mail sent. Um, within the last hour. Okay. Actually, within the last 10, 15 minutes, Chengatai is saying, but certainly within the last hour, Eleanor, um, actually. I deeply appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. So we thought we... Sorry. Thank you. Aida, you have the floor. Uh, just to add, uh, I would like to suggest mergers. I already suggested a wild card, but now that I just rechecked, number 162, uh, Geneva D Digital Convention was my wild card. Uh, but uh, I would like to suggest a merger with number 34, which is a Digital Geneva Convention to protect cyberspace. Uh, as I saw them both, I think they similarly meet criteria, and while the number 34 is ranked pretty high. Uh, 162 is very low, so I think these two could go together very well. Thank you. That's um, that's a useful comment. I'm 
I'm trying to figure out how we note those. Of course, the transcript helps immensely in terms of going back and capturing them. So if people can make sure when they make a comment like that, that the workshop numbers are captured correctly in the transcript. Um, failing that. So 162 to, uh, to merger with 34. Thank you. And we'll, we'll determine when we come back and look at some of the, that one may actually come through in the wild card process because one was on the wild card. Sure, thank you. So let's move now to the government proposals that were here. Um, again, there were a number of comments this morning um, with concerns about the fact that governments were underrepresented. And if I may make one comment as well, the one we weren't um, clear on was whether or not there were any proposals that should be forward, pulled forward um, for review from the African region. Um, so maybe if I can ask those of you that are from the African region, if there are some proposals you'd like to pull forward, if you could inform the Secretariat. We heard from many other people this morning, Asia and MENA and, and Eastern Europe and that sort of thing, and we did manage to um, track a lot of those people down over the lunch hour and make sure we had captured their um, submissions correctly. But I don't feel that we did that adequately for any of the proposals that had African region as a stakeholder. So if there are some that should be on the wild card list, um, then please let us know. And some of them may be here in the government as well. But So um, I'm having a hard time yeah. seeing um, this. Is there um, somebody in the room who could actually speak to the first? And I think the way we've done this in past years is we, you know, this goes forward if there's somebody to represent it in the room. That doesn't mean champion or lobby. It simply means represent the discussion in the room. So, to, so quickly to introduce it and argue for why you think it should go forward, um, I think it would be helpful. We have the ranking number. Maybe um, if the Secretariat could also just tell us what the, um, not so much for 75, because that's obviously a very highly rated proposal, but for some of the other numbers, uh, if we also understood what the rankings for were for them as well, that would help. And any comments that were submitted as well from the um, from the reviewers. I'm sorry, just to check, uh, have you all received the email? Because sometimes I... No. Nobody? Which email? Sorry. Uh, with the uh, Excel file and uh, link. Okay. Just oh, yeah. Yeah. Just now. yeah, I I just sent it again, yeah. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the latest one you should have received just now. Uh -huh. So, uh, but also if you do have the, um, the main sheet with all the rankings, you can just easily um, just do a quick sort w with the tabs. Um, yes, exactly. You can just do the same thing if you know how to do it. No, no, that's fine. So does everybody have the correct document in front of them? I, I know, I know. Right now we're just working from the government list that was a document that was sent out mid-morning today. Sorry. Hi, Lynn. Sorry, can you just give us time to delete all the rest and just pull this one up before you start uh, working on them? I think we can probably start with the government list. That list came out mid-morning. Oh, yeah, that was it's, the first one, yeah. So. That one came out mid-morning. Um, it's, uh, it's shown up here on the screen. So the first one that we're actually going to look at is um, ID number 57 was ranked 75. It's a playbook for gender equality, how to harness the power of digital media, and emerging technologies. And who was the um, proposer? Canada and South Africa. So is there any buddy? Please. I think we should not waste more more time with that because it's 75. It's from Canada and South Africa. The it, it has diversity in the speakers, also from the proposer because it's Canada is the main one, but it's South Africa, so it's two two, and 
the, the subject is a sub subject that also is of interest of the content. So I suggest to approve that without further delay and then go to the next one. Okay. No, thank, thank you, Juan. You actually always break the ice in this sort of situation, I think. Um, um, but again, my screen hadn't refreshed. We have Liesl in the queue, and then I'll actually see if there's support for that or not. Liesl, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I also would support um, that proposal moving forward, number 57, not only because it is the top of the list and basically almost makes the cut anyway, but um, also for the comments that Juan just made. Um, I would also, I, I, I think you may be going through each of them, but just to limit my intervention, I guess my next one, based on, um, if I may just say it now, uh, if I were to put forward another one, um, going with the goal of regional diversity and, and my own um, uh, view that my, it might also have some balance if we have more technically based um, workshops on the technologies, um, I would put forward number 202, which is put forward by Egypt. Sorry if I've messed up your procedure. But no, no, I don't think you did. So let okay. me just, we'll, we'll go one by one. But um, I think we're going to do this on the issue of are there any objections? Um, and I do want to try and keep a careful watch on the speaking queue um, for electronic. And again, there is a 30 second delay. Um, but right now we have a, 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 a support for including ID workshop number 57 in. And we've had two levels of support, but what I'm looking for is not 55 comments on support, but whether or not there's a strong objection. So we're going forward with 57 um, we moved into the workshop. Hmm? We agree to strongly object. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have Jack in the queue, and then Flavio, and then Pablo. Um, hand down, just to support. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, Flavio, you're next in the queue. Just to be clear about the procedure we are following now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, because if we do this exercise, maybe we will end up with more than eight proposals that are worthwhile to be included in the program. So, are we already definitely approving those proposals or just putting them on a separate list if this list is too big, then we have to make a second round and go through the list and decide which ones we are really keeping. I would propose to do it in two steps. In two steps, or could we do it in one step? I mean, the proposal number 57 was ranked 75. It's two governments. It's got great diversity, both on the panel and the is that one we would say we would definitively rule in? Because that otherwise we're going to go through the same whole list again. And I don't. So I would like maybe if we could, as a, if you will, accept a slight mod modification on your. Some of them we definitely rule in. Others we actually put in a second, a second pot. In the queue, I have um, Pablo and then Sala. But oh, Pablo's taking himself out of the queue. Sala. Um, hi, I'd like to um, uh, submit the 214 as my wild card. Can you, that's not the process we're in at the moment. Oh, sorry, what process <laughs> are we in? I'm, I'm confused because I've opened so many spreadsheets. And the only one you need to open right now is the one that was the government proposals that were sent mid-morning this morning and are the ones that are displayed in the Adobe Connect chat room. Um, and then if you are adding another um, wildcard proposal, we can do that in the second step when we come. Okay, okay, sorry, I thought you were adding another wild card. So let's be, this is just a government list. I, I must remember to thank the person who proposed wild cards separately. <laughs> Regardless of what you called it, this would still be happening. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, I think that's true. I think that's true. <laughs> Um, so, 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 okay, let's go for the next one on the list, which is 214. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So, workshop 214 was proposed by uh, the government of Netherlands, 
And uh, I also note that uh, the technical community is uh, uh, represented, and I note that in the analytics where the harvest was gathered, the technical, the technical community was underrepresented. And so RIPE NCC, in terms of the regional internet re registries, um, are, are represented here. And I think this topic uh, would, be, would be good in terms of um, adding uh, some level of uh, diversity to the uh, current uh, thematic areas. Are there any further substantive reflections on the proposal? Helping us to rule it in or rule it out? Sorry, my speaking cue just Just one, just one quick addition, noting that uh, Ifrinic is not mentioned, but that's something we can easily uh, suggest for them to include. So are there... And again, sorry, my speaking cue just disappeared, so I need to pull it back up, froze and something. Um, are there any strong objections to moving forward with workshop number 214? Um, again, until I get my speaking cue back up, I saw Renata and Suman, I think. And Carlos is the only person with speaking cue until it refreshes. Okay. There is Chuck, I think. Sorry. Renata, you have the floor. Um, again, uh, I agree with Flavio that uh, we m have to be careful because we have only eight slots and we can't put all government proposal in these eight slots. So uh, I am fine with uh, 57 and 163 from the government list. Go, uh, developing countries uh, being represented. Uh, so, Renata, you said you're fine with what were the two numbers again? I'm sorry, my computer's 57, up which we've already agreed, and 163. And 163, which we'll come to in a moment. Um, the call and out. And also had support on the chat. The, the call right now in front of the room is for 214. I think we agreed we were going to go through them one by one. So for proposal 214, which is the second one on the list, was ranked for 132. You want to put that? There's a proposal to put that on the second list. Okay. So let's put that one there. Just one second. We need to find a different way to manage the queue here because my computer packed up and I keep getting an error. Um, so if Chengatai can, I guess, still use the electronic speaking queue, but um, I'll have to defer to Chengatai to help me drive it here. Okay. Um, so we have Jack, Flavio, Miguel, and Renata in the queue. So Jack, you have the floor. Um, Please, on 214. I think mine was from the previous hand up, which I've already taken down. Okay. So, Renata. Uh, Flavio? No, he doesn't want it. Miguel? Miguel? It's Nacho, Nacho Estrada, next from, and then. Miguel. Right. Miguel, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Miguel. A little. Um, Miguel, I'm sorry, we we can't hear you. Miguel, I'm sorry, we can't hear you. Is it possible for you to type your comments in? Miguel, we'll wait for you to type your comments in, and in the meantime, move to Renata. I'm just going to start. Restart. No, he's done. She's done. She's so done. Okay. Get <laughs> down. Okay, so we have Juan Fernandez in the queue. 
No, uh, uh, I just want to say that why don't we go a little bit faster because we will need more time for the other list. I think that here, uh, these are the only nine from governments. I think that here, only those that are really uh, with the big ob objections, uh, uh, we should take it out. For instance, this one, uh, I, I saw it for the first time, but it's, it's an interesting topic even for private sector because it's about a technique that is using for reuse, re reusing IPv4 addresses instead of going to the full installation of IPv6. And that's one of the topics that the community is asking us to review because, you know, the, the, the IPv4 was exhausted and, and this. So I think that we should move uh, faster. If it's some, if somebody can find out that the speaker is not diverse enough so that we should do some actions, you know, try them to, to get some other speakers, you know, to do some. But, but go with the, with the will, with the will of including it, and if it's not enough how it is proposed, how to fix it. You know, go with that projection, because we will need more time for the wild card, for the Asia-Pacific list that is a bigger list. And otherwise, Chair, we will not have time. Thank you. No, thank you, Juan. I think that's good, good advice. Um, in the queue, we have France. Um, <laughs> no. Yes, hello. I'm. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I'm Frederick. Uh, I'm, in, I'm uh, jumping in to uh, try to save uh, the rank 265 diversity in the internet uh, it might be on the internet or but uh, uh, i still uh, trying to figure out it's a proposal uh, proposed by the french government with the organisation internationale de la francophonie uh, we have uh, speakers from uh, from africa or speaker from africa and a speaker from france uh, the issue is uh, uh, diversity uh, uh, on the internet uh, on africa but also diversity for the internet governance uh, and uh, my cue here is uh, uh, we are part of the igf internet governance forum I know that many uh, organizations like the ITU uh, uh, have working groups on uh, how to boost IP6 uh, and very technical uh, issues. And I was wondering if the, within the Internet, Internet Governments Forum, we would, should not focus on governance. And uh, our proposal was, uh, is to boost uh, diversity within uh, the internet governance and uh, with uh, some case in point from, uh, from Africa. And uh, I can also tell that uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this workshop could be, could be, making, uh, could be uh, made in French or in English. Thank you. Um. Following Juan Fernandez's. Uh, there is Jack, Jack, please. Thank you. Do you want to say something? No. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, I think it's just not removing me from the queue, but I haven't put my hand up. Okay, it's so Julian. Julian. Okay, so we have. So could we just for a moment? Could we uh, maybe clean the queue up? So Jack, um, Miguel, we couldn't hear. So I think he's going to send in his comment in writing. We should remove him. Um, and then I had uh, Juan, Julian, and Raquel, but maybe Juan's is old. Juan's is old, so Julian, we are at you. Thank you. Um, just uh, comment on 214 proposal. Uh, it's a first time proposer, but uh, if selected, it is encouraged to uh, uh, gender balance in the panel and to include the stakeholders from other g regions that are not represented, that are on the comments already of that. Maybe it's good idea to put the comments uh, from the MAC members and then uh, we can uh, just uh, look quickly at them and um, no need to as for the yes. floor. Good. 
So, um, Julian, you're, so, so I heard you supporting 214. I think there's already a request on the floor to put 214 on the um, maybe, possibly list. Um, so we'll move forward with that. We're also suggesting that we just move to look at the comments per That's the proposals and instead of uh, uh, instead of the individual introductions, I think that's a a good idea. Um, I'll let Eleonora try and um, pull that together. Um, well, the good news is I have my computer restarted and my speaking cue back, <laughs> but. Um, trying to follow now the next number in the workshop. Uh, 182, what are future scenarios for the global cooperation in cybersecurity field? And the comments were, if we can move over to, um, reaction to this workshop proposal is very inward looking at the processes of internet governance rather than the issues of internet governance. Looking at the tools for internet governance like remote participation and multilingualism is important, but it seems like that could be a meeting of concerned people in the community rather than a workshop at the IGF. Uh, regarding content, Pierce lists a wide variety of questions, so much could be interesting discussion, but they don't seem to be well structured for a workshop outline. There was um, kind of a, a question on diversity, saying that there are no new voices that they can ascertain and another comment that says it lacks diversity and need to hear new voices on the issues. Um, so without somebody arguing further for that workshop, so again, the workshop was number uh, 182, ranked 146. And the title was, What are Future Scenarios for the Global Cooperation and Cybersecurity Field? Is there a move from the floor to keep? Jorge, you have the floor. May I, may I proceed? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for giving me the floor. Um, I tried to, to use uh, the electronic system, but it uh, didn't seem to work. Um, just to, to explain, um, as this is a proposal pr uh, put forward by the Swiss government, Swiss that government. it is intended to cover, uh, we think, a very important topic, which is uh, the, the work of the UNGGE, which is the UN uh, gov governmental group of experts, which is uh, dealing with uh, cyber uh, security issues uh, on a, a state to uh, of state-to-state -state, uh, relations, there, there was a, if I don't remember uh, incorrectly, the, there was a first uh, workshop in Jao Pessoa, uh, no, in in Jalisco where this topic was uh, first uh, uh, tackled in uh, the, the IGF environment. It's a, a discussion which is going on within the UN on a very intergovernmental level. And uh, this proposal uh, was intended to bring this discussion also to the multi-stakeholder environment of the IGF and at least inform about the latest developments of the NGGE, which are foreseen to uh, be concluded in the present uh, um, configuration of this uh, working group in se uh, September of 2017. Uh, maybe the, there are some issues with uh, uh, the with the presentation as such of, uh, of the workshop proposal, perhaps it, it was too sketchy or perhaps uh, the diversity of speakers could have been uh, developed more, but uh, uh, bearing in mind how delicate this issue is, uh, it, it was quite uh, difficult to to really um, shape it and to to give it uh, the, the right focus. 
and uh, that's why perhaps uh, our colleagues uh, from uh, Foreign Affairs Department came a little bit late with the proposal. But nonetheless, we think that uh, the substance uh, basically of, of this uh, workshop is something that at this level is not covered by other workshop proposals in the in the roster we have. Um, there may be, of course, overlaps. Uh, I don't exclude, of course, that there could be mergers or uh, synergies with uh, other workshop proposals where there is some talk about the, the process of the UNGG. But uh, in uh, this uh, level of uh, centrality, uh, I don't think that this is tackled, and uh, it is, of course, uh, one of the most important developments within the UN framework in, uh, in this uh, field, and it would be um, perhaps uh, a loss and sad to, to not cover this in the multi-stakeholder dialogue environment that only the, the IGF uh, can give at this level. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jorge. I think you made um, uh, quite a number of really good points. Um, I also heard um, agreement to work and, and perhaps address some of the shortcomings which were noted in the comments in the proposal. Um, given um, both the subject matter, which is something Flavio had suggested we keep in mind as well, um, going forward, and the lack of government representation. I'm going to try putting something forward to the floor, which said, is there a strong objection to including this workshop with um, Jorge's or the Swiss government's um, approval to, again, address some of the noted deficiencies? Um, now, let me just figure, I'm trying to figure out, we actually have an electronic queue with four speaking members and some people in the room who are wanting to jump in immediately on this question. Um, I think that's the question in front of us. So if you're in the queue, I really would like you to address that question. So let me go through the four that are in, identify whether or not you want to address that question or if you were in for a different comment, and see if we can close on this particular workshop. So in the queue, I had Raquel. Out. That's an old one. A new, a new one. And then I had Jorge, which I think you just spoke, right? Um, Juan. Yes, I, I strongly support what Jorge just said, and I'm really very grateful that a government that is a member of the GG, in case Switzerland, was, is open to, to share with the rest of the stakeholder what is happening there. As he said, last year in Guadalajara, we had a very interesting uh, workshop ar around this, and I'm, I'm taking the time explaining this because we were not only the uh, wedding planners, we are also our persons related with internet, and this is good for everybody to know. As you know, cybersecurity has been handled only in governments only uh, uh, scenarios and without the rest of the stakeholders' interaction. And as a matter of fact, there's a big discussion. What is the role for the rest of the stakeholders? That is why it was so welcome the initiative of Microsoft uh, regarding that, because it's another stakeholder that is. Uh, jumping into the arena uh, on, on this. So I think this workshop proposal by the government of Switzerland is it's very interesting, very welcome, I think, very useful. But I will recommend that the list that Flavio said is the list of the n not conditional. I, I will put that the list, in the case of government thing, of the one that needs improvement. I think that this will need to be improved in terms of the speakers, maybe some other speakers from other governments, member of GGE, the, the, as you know, there are 25 countries there, could be uh, approached in order to have diversity in the views, not only the view from the, from the Swiss government, but from of some other governments that, that are there, uh, and, and maybe even some other stakeholder events. But I think this should be for the government to talk to the rest of the stakeholders and to have a, some sort of dialogue of what has been the re result there. I think it's very useful. Kansho has explained it very well, and I think it's a very useful thing with that caveat that the, the list of speakers should be wider. In You know, there's many countries there. Even Cuba is there. So, in the, in so, the I, th GG. so I think, Juan, your suggestion was that it 
not be put in the definite category, that it be put in the maybe category, but they address, With they address, yes, right? yes, exactly. Got it. And, and some that needs improvement, put it in, in yes, it it's exactly where it is, in the conditional acceptance. So I want to put forward and then just look to see whether or not there are any strong objections. Um, and it's a little hard to manage within the context of this queue because people are probably in the queue for others. But again, let's be clear that that workshop, um, the proposal in front of the floor right now is that that be accepted, conditional acceptance upon addressing some of the, the um, noted shortcoming. So I see one or two hands here in the room. Um, I don't know, maybe in the Adobe Connect chat room or something, we can ask those folks that are participating remotely if they want to come in on this particular question to indicate that way because otherwise I can't tell in the queue who's in the queue because of a new topic and who's in the queue on this, on this particular item. But right now I have Flavio wants to come in on this one specifically and Elizabeth who wants to come in specifically. And if there's anybody participating remotely who wants to come in specifically, please note that in the chat room. And Luis, maybe you can monitor the chat room for me. Thank you. Flavio, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Lynn. Yeah, the, uh, two issues. Uh, one is uh, already covered by, by Juan, that, uh, that we need more diversity in the speakers, not only other governments, but also other regions, not only Europe, uh, and also other stakeholder groups. So diversity must be improved a lot. And uh, another issue that I, one of the, 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 the criteria I have suggested this morning is that we try to avoid uh, subjects that are already very well represented among the top 72, and this is the case cyber sec security. So if we keep this in the, the maybe list, yeah, and uh, even in the, the, the comments from the, the evaluators, there is a suggestion that this proposal could be merged with uh, 224, 31, 108. So there are other workshops that also cover more or less the same issue. So this could be also kept for a future reference. Yeah. OK, that's a good comment, Flavio. Elizabeth, do you still want to come in on this? OK. I'd, li I'd like to support, yes, I'd like to support what uh, Flavio just said. Um, I also wonder, we talked about having the criteria up. Um, at the same time, and I'm thinking that would be very useful because I have the feeling that we're go undertaking a balancing act and we've kind of forgotten how some of these ended up with really low scores is one, one comment. And then the other one specifically to this, this item is as much as I can appreciate the compelling argument and support for it, I'm very concerned that if we do that with these um, items and we pick ones out, um, because they've been well argued, will actually end up not balancing. What, cri what of the criteria, what of the, the gaps that we're trying to fill will this one address? And I don't see that at this moment. I see that it's a compelling subject and interesting, you know, it has a, it has a strong argument behind it from a person, but we can do that with every single one. And so this isn't moving us one step towards the balancing act, unless if we put it in that second basket, the solution to that would be that the way it would have acceptance on the, you know, the first list would be that it added or included other um, components that would make it be a contributor to filling the gap to that would have regional and other diversity that's missing um, and, and that kind of thing. So that, that would be my suggestion. So I, th I think the gap it's clearly filling is governments. That's what this list is, was the government gap. Let me. But it's, it's I, with I, all respect to Switzerland, I'm so glad they're hosting. <laughs> they have a lot of influence over the substance and, 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 and that. I, I, th I think if we are going to preference a few governments and we can't preference the whole list, we should choose governments that aren't already as well integrated and, and, and um, reflect their, their interests and goals reflected in the agenda. With, I mean, and that's not so against it. Wh whatever the host country was, I would feel that way. Um, wait a minute. No, I, I don't know that we need to jump in. First of all, we're not, there are eight governments which we were considering. We spent a significant amount of time this morning st saying that governments were underrepresented. Um, I think right now, I'm mean, clear on where the proposal is. The proposal is that it's in the second category, that it needs to address some of the um, shortcomings where, and diversity was clearly one of those. So right now, and I'm going to look to see if there's strong objection for moving forward with it in 
The second category, because of the long discussion we had this morning on underrepresentation by governments. Otherwise, we go forward, it's in the second list, and it's not in the um, automatically accepted. I see a lot of unhappy faces around the room, but I don't know how to process this differently. Um, Arnold wants to come in on that, and then Juan. Thank you, Lynn. Arnold van Heijn speaking um, on behalf of the Dutch government. Um, very shortly, I, I fully support uh, this proposal, and uh, I also agree with uh, Juan that uh, it needs improvements. I remember that last year during the IGF uh, in Mexico, I informed the, uh, the IGF community, I think it was a dynamic coalition, about the existence of this group. UN group, which is doing in, uh, uh, tremendous uh, good work, and uh, especially uh, if you are talking about uh, standards. And the Netherlands has uh, put forward a proposal, one specific standard, which says how to pre protect the core of the Internet against unwarranted state influence. And this uh, standard is being discussed in the UNGGE. So a uh, very fundamental issue, and uh, I, I applaud uh, Switzerland for coming forward with this proposal and, uh, well, hope to be it on the first list, if not, then the second list. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Juan? I'm sorry to go against Elizabeth. You know, we are always in agreement in many things, but here, uh, she was the first to said that sometimes the overall um, that we have to get into the in inside of the of the workshop in order to get some of these criteria, and I think that's part of the work that we have to do. If if we put here more governments, as Flavio said, from different areas in in this workshop, we it's not only Switzerland. It will be more governments from that group because it's 25 countries there. Brazil is one of the countries there. Kenya is one of the countries there. There are many countries. Egypt is one of the countries there. So we, if we could have experts from those countries uh, to be in this workshop, if the, this proposal can reach to them, to have an, in this country, even Q is part of the country, could be there as, as well. Then we have what you said. It's not only Switzerland. It's many countries. And this is the work that we as MAG can do improving the, the workshops. We should not be passive. I always say that we should not be passive in, in the workshops that needs improvement. Those are very good, okay, we leave it like there. But the rest, that's a responsibility. We can talk with the proposal. You, you have to put from, from more countries. And if they don't put it, it doesn't go in. That's, we can do that. And we will then steer the workshop in that direction. The direction is to have government. With that, we can have four or five government in one blow, because we will have four or five uh, uh, speakers from different governments in, in only one. That's the thing that thing we, 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 can, we have to do. We have to be proactive in this, not only reacting to, to what is proposed. So I'd like to propose that we keep it in the maybe category. We ask the proposers to, and we can put it and come back at the end of the process if we want to assess how many governments we've put in and what. I, I don't see uh, enough support for putting it in with a conditional acceptance, and I don't see um, enough support for taking it out entirely. So can we put it in that maybe list and work with the proposers to um, improve it along the lines of the discussion here? Let me visit it later. Okay, so there's yeses and heads nodding in the room. And Luis, are you going to help me <laughs> with the online? No, yeah, there is uh, just some reaction. There are some reactions in the in the online participation room. Uh, for example, uh, Virginia Paque says she's not supporting uh, this one. I'm not sure if. Okay. Ginger Pack, a MAG member. Um, said that she wasn't supporting it. And is there a rationale for not supporting it? And is she not supporting it as a, at all? Or could she live, could those that are participating online live with putting it in the maybe bucket pending um, improvement along the lines we've discussed and possibly <coughs> subsequent review? She has up indeed, so she can talk. Ginger, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luis. Thank you. And thank you, Chair. Uh, really appreciate it. My point was absolutely not. I don't support this workshop. 
It says that I'm not voice a plus. We are having a very uh, effect that in the uh, about the fact that we are unable to voice our opinions or even have our so what I was suggesting in the chat alleys like even on a graph could be shown for plus one three minus one plus two for one sixty eight minus two for two fourteen all we're asking for a voice all we're asking is to have our to be counted. Yeah, and, and Thank you very much. No, we, we very mu much want you to have a voice. We really are trying to figure out how to do that within a, you know, a, a process that's just very, very fluid here. Um, you know, I, I, I could support the plus one, plus twos, but I think the substantive, the substantive information comes through um, kind of the, the voice, <laughs> frankly. Um, I, wonder, I wonder if... When it, sorry, I, I wonder if when I put a question like that to the room, um, if we wait a moment and we ask the folks that are participating online in the Adobe Connect room to say um, yes or no, you could support going forward, um, and maybe that's what you mean with a plus one, minus one, <laughs> um, et cetera, with the proposal as it's supported, and that's a way to get uh, the feel for the folks that are participating online. Would that work? Ginger? Yeah, if I can be heard now, um, I'm going to say that, yes, we've been trying to work out some kind of function like that, and I know you have been trying as well. And in Luis, well, we know he has many tasks. Uh, we would appreciate someone, our plus one, our minus one, and giving our count to you. Uh, Luis has already agreed that he will work on some kind of formal system for this for our next meeting, and I think it would be brilliant. There are people in the room and in the chat on the floor. So, Rid, we have uh, main questions or some kind of simple post system and are able to just put in an electronic plus one without having to take the floor. That would be very helpful. Um, I know Luis is hearing us, and I know we're working on it, so we'll try to be uh, patient with this meeting and hope for, the, for improvements in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we can definitely work on that so that we get the benefit of your heads nodding yes or heads nodding no, which would be the equivalent to what's here in the room, um, at the same time avoiding voting, which is a longstanding principle here within the the um, Internet governance space and particularly within the, the MAG space. Um, so the proposal we have in front of us for um, this particular workshop um, was that it and I'm just going to state it again and see if I can figure out where we are as a, as a room here, um, was that it actually went in the maybe category that Switzerland was going to go away and address some of the um, shortcomings that were noted in both the comments and in the discussion here in the room. And we would look at that as a workshop that might be pulled forward in the future. So the only other, uh, there's not enough support in the room to put it in the definite category. If people don't support that as a proposal in the maybe category, then we're now entering a discussion which is take it out altogether. And I, I have to admit, just with the people here that I can see in the room, and while I wait for the online one to come on, there, there's, um, I don't believe there would be support for taking it out entirely. But are people okay going forward with the maybe category? Uh, um, so online, we will um, look for your comments in the chat room, and in the meantime, G has asked for the floor. G, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I think uh, the UNGGE on, on information uh, security is the most important thing in this area, and uh, I support, I propose that we put it in the de definitely yes catalog rather than in maybe type. And wh where are we now? We we have finished discussion discussion of uh, 57 and 2, 214. And uh, which category are they in? 57 is in definitely, and 214 is in uh, the the conditional, maybe category. 
I think my my suggestion that both of them in in maybe category and the one 182 be indefinitely yes. Um, that was not the consensus of the room though at the time yeah, because, on 214. Yeah, well, um, then uh, when we talk about the consensus, what constitutes consensus? When I am disagreeing, there is no consensus on 57. Thank so you. We operate under um, rough consensus here. Mm. And How rough is rough? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on which mag meeting, I would say. Mm. <laughs> minus one is rough or minus two? No, uh, so um, no. rough consensus and judging consensus is as much kind of an art as mm. a science. Um, mm. It has to be because of a, 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 mm. a, a reasonable, um, mm. significant mm. objection. Um, that's the things that tend to rule. It can be one person that can rule it out. It can be, you know, ten that rule it out. But it, it has to be on a substantive, um, sustain, um, um, substantive rationale. None of these are ruled out. The conditional, you know, quite likely are pulled in. Right now we have 214 um, in the, the, the conditional. We can revisit that afterwards. But um, and I'd really like to, if we can, please, with your support, stay on 182 and complete the, the negotiations on that I one. I have strong reservation with gender equality. I don't think gender is something has anything to do with Internet governance. Thank you. No, thank you for your comments. It's, it's well noted. Um, but in that one, I think the clear consensus of the room was that it was definitely in. So I uh, appreciate the comments, and we will stay with the previous um, position from the, from the MAG. We are back on 182. Um, was there a, anything in the chat room with respect to those folks that are online to the proposal, which was that that stay in the conditional category pending improvements and subsequent review? Lewis is shaking his head no. That means that... Are the people that are participating online okay with that as a approach? Louis, I'll give you a moment to um, uh, see if you can call that from within the room there and give the floor to Juan and then Carlos. Juan. I'm sorry, uh, Chair, but, but I think we're complicating our work here because in this particular case of, of governments, the second list, we should not call it um, conditional because because we have to work for putting it in, because we have to fill this, either with op, move it to, to upper forum or for the age late. So I, I will put the second list that every, every, we have to work for all those nine there to be accepted. One list is accepted as it is, and the other is that it needs improvement, improvement either in the proposal, either in the subject, even in the title, or even in the diversity of the speakers. But I think that's really because if we talk of conditional, conditional for what? We are fooling ourselves. What we're trying to do is to improve it, to have it in, because the objective is to have more governments into the, the workshop. When we get to the wild cards or the other ones, then we can get into the conditional capacity because what, what, what Wagner says, the, the, the number will be greater that we could not put everyone in in a lump. So we will have then to maybe to do two passes to put some conditional and then to see the other one. But here it's not conditional. Here the idea is try to put all in, except maybe, maybe except if one of them are so bad or the theme is so bad that it can uh, be. But I, I am in, and maybe we can get to that. But on, on first look, it, it, it all seems okay with some working. Some of the titles there are horrible. For instance, this 163 title, it's crazy, but uh, we can change that. And so, Juan, I mean, thank, thank you for your comments. Um, I, I actually think your perspective is a little bit different than um, other people in the room. Um, the, we, were, we had not decided that we were going to automatically rule in all these proposals from governments and we were just going to go away and figure out how we fix them. That wasn't um, what was agreed. I think we're looking at these in the same way we're going to look through the others which is against the criteria. And, you know, with a good wind behind their back, they're probably in. Um, but the other, the other factor we're trying to bring into play is really understanding um, the amount of slots we have to play with and people not wanting to give up the eight we had and the first eight that came in, which had me government approvals. And I, I think that's what we had agreed earlier. 
Um, Flavio, Flavio has asked for a small kind yeah. of intercept here. Just for a, pro a practical reason, uh, one, we have there nine proposals. If you accept six or seven of them, even if they uh, need uh, some further improvements, then we have no space anymore for all, all other wild cards. So we cannot accept just these eight proposals. If we do this, then the, the, the meeting is over. We don't have room for the other uh, wild cards. And we also need to, to increase balance uh, uh, for other reasons, not only governments, but also because uh, some regions are underrepresented or some subjects are missing and, and so on. That's the reason why we have the wild cards. Thank you, Flavio. Um, I think what we had agreed in the room was that 182 um, stayed in the maybe. There were some suggestions possibly about some mergers. Um, I'm clear on kind of the position, consensus position here in the room. I was just trying to understand whether or not there was um, any strong dissenting opinion from those that are participating online. But unfortunately, I'm not in the Adobe Connect chat room. We are not sure if maybe Nacho Estrada wants to say something. Because we are not sure if we are using the electronic queue at the moment or because we have to refer to the specific workshop that we are discussing. It's better that um, anyone can jump in at the moment. So we're in test. As you know, so. uh, yeah, now my preference would be to use the queue, but then that means you need to get in the queue to address the specific issue. And if your comment isn't to that specific issue that's open, then you should step out of the queue and come back in later. Um, and I think we had a mixture before, which is why I was trying to figure out who was in the queue um, to address the specific uh, question that was in front of the floor. The specific question that's in front of the floor right now, specifically the online floor, is whether or not um, they can support Workshop 182 being in the maybe category um, pending uh, the proposers addressing some of the concerns addressed through the room here and in the comments. Okay, so I'm just typing in support um, for 182. Um, I see a couple of no comments. Um, at this point, let's continue figuring out how we actually work the, um, the queue online. And, and maybe we could ask Anya, um, since Louis, you're managing a number of other things, uh, Anya to sp put the specific question into the chat room when we're actually looking for a go ahead on some specific <coughs> question that's in front of the floor and try and, try and manage it that way. And, and just a very short comment, everyone is also able to uh, hand down the, da the, the hand when they're in the queue right. and then hand up again. But maybe is, this is the first time we use this electronic queue, so we have to give it an opportunity and if we have to, to adapt. So if, when someone needs to, to uh, uh, we all understand. But I think that if we use the hubs, it, it also helps the scribes. I mean, it helps uh, online participants to... But uh, uh, we all understand that we have to adapt because if, for example, some point needs to be discussed, it's not always easy. So, but for the next option, for example, we could put what to be discussed next to the queue, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we can have more suggestions about how to improve it. No, we're, I mean, we're very, very grateful for all of your efforts and certainly grateful for all your vision as you try and figure out how to, how to improve processing this online. Um, much, much appreciated. And this is already a, a huge improvement forward. This part of the process is never, never smooth <laughs> sailing. Um, so I'm going to, to close then on 182 going into the maybe um, category and move to the fourth one in the government um, workshop, which is um, item number one, ID 163, which was rated 153rd. And the title is Multicultural, Multi-Stakeholder, Face-to-Face, and Remote Capacity Building. A 90-minute debate. Um, and the comments were, and I have to thank Chengatai here for <laughs> his masterful imagery. It's lacks diversity and need to hear new voices on the issues. For people who have been within IGF circles and presented numerous IGF workshops, they could have accessed more diversity of voices and representations from across the earth. Is there anybody who wants to propose that that should go forward? Um, G, you have your hand up, and then Raquel. It, 
Thank you, Chair. I tend to agree with uh, Flavio that uh, we do need, we, we should not, you know, take all these government proposals into the final list. Um, maybe we can, uh, you know, uh, select two or three from this governmental um, part and leave the other chances to, you know, for, for the sake of addressing the regional imbalance. For example, after s choose two or three from this group, this category, we, we uh, give five or ten um, slots for Asia Pacific specifically. That will be more fair. Thank you. And for this particular proposal, um, I don't think it's good in, um, I don't understand what it means, so I don't agree to it. Thank you. Thank you, G. Are there, we have Raquel in the queue. Raquel. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. I just want to uh, first make, before going to my substantive comment, uh, just to make a procedure comment. Um, it's been a little bit confusing. I also appreciate a lot the work that has been done. Uh, I thought I was good on multitasking, but it's been a challenge to follow all the chats and and um, and here in the room. So just to be um, aware that you know we need to be clear when we are in the queue or or when to intervene. I'm fine with dropping uh, from the list and coming back again, but just being aware of it. Um, so my, let's go to the meat of the discussion, and I, I hopefully I'm doing a proposal to. Um, to be helpful on, on going forward. Um, what I see, I evaluated one of those proposals and I see 163, 168, and 176 has a bottom line which are uh, promoting more content and capacity building on local language and, and bringing in local actors. So I think there is a potential, a strong potential to merge those. 163 and 168 are both presented by Argentina um, and then do put as goals very similar um, topics. And then 176 uh, proposed by France with the Francophone is also about this diversity and, and, and honestly I was just checking them here and, and they they seem to be tackling the same issue. The, the problem they want to solve no, is the same. So, oh, I have some, okay, sorry, I had some phone in. And, uh, um, and so I, I think that's what I want to put forward um, to, as a suggestion to, to merge them and then have one strong government proposal in with diversity also in the geographical balance. Thank you, Raquel. Um, before we comment on that, we have two more people in the queue, um, which I assume is on this matter. So we have Sigun. Sigun, you have the floor. No, you try to get the floor down. And G, are you in the queue, or was that from earlier? Uh, from earlier. Okay. Um, so what we have on the floor um, is a proposal from Raquel to merge 160 to work with the proposers to see if we can get one merge proposal across 163, 168, and 176. I'd like comments specifically um, on that. And I have uh, in the floor Herman and Renata. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I strongly uh, support um, uh, Raquel's uh, proposal. I think. Uh, it will help to, in some way, to include uh, this uh, proposal from government. I, I found kind of difficult uh, to defend uh, uh, proposal 176, as it was ranked very at the very uh, last in the in the in the rank. Uh, but I think the the option uh, proposed by, by Raquel is a good way to include uh, um, the, this uh, this uh, government's uh, proposal, uh, I think it's, it makes sense, and uh, I would like to to uh, add to Raquel's idea. And if I might also to to allow to and also to uh, not deviate too much in the comments uh, also from the floor, uh, I'd like to, uh, for the record, uh, state that the gender balance is an intrinsic, inseparable, and deeply rooted uh, part of the internet governance discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Herman. 
Um, I have Cheryl in the queue, and then France, I will come to you exceptionally. Normally, this part of the meeting is reserved for MAG members. It's the MAG process, but I will allow you to speak on the proposal. Um, you will be second in the queue after, after Cheryl. Thank you. Um, I'm all for mergers, but I just think merging three might be a bit much. It, it's it's going to be a little bit challenging, and so I think we would need to work out exactly how to do that. Also, the topics are similar, but they're sort of going in different directions, and it's a 90-minute session. It's not a longer session, and so those would be the challenges of the merger. But I do, uh, you know, I agree that on its own, you know, 163, there was a real lack of diversity. Um, on a couple of different levels, and a lot of the speakers among all the proposals, they're, you know, they're all us, right? So I would like to see maybe some new voices in there as well, even with the merger. Thanks. Thank you, Cheryl. France, you have the floor. Yes, uh, just uh, uh, represented, uh, representing the people who wrote. Uh, uh, surely, this the proposal 176 uh, could be. Uh, um, uh, bettered uh, in many ways. Uh, I'm not absolutely uh, against uh, a merger, uh, but the topics that we are trying to propose is uh, two ways, diversity on the internet, uh, how can you express how diversity is expressed on the internet, but also diversity on the governance, within the governance of the internet, uh, which are uh, uh, different subjects. So I'm not uh, at all uh, against a, a discussion to, to merge uh, one or two proposals, uh, but just uh, to make sure that diversity, our, our proposal would be to uh, define diversity on the internet first. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick. Um, we have G and let me just check the queue here. I think those are all still the old hands. So G and then Carlos and Renata. G, you have the floor. Very briefly, I just want to support the merge of the three mentioned. Okay, thank you. Thank you, G. Um, Carlos. Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just to support that idea, uh, um, especially uh, 163, 168, I think they're in the same level, so to speak. And 168 talks about, about inclusion. So uh, even though the, 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 the subject is, is, is uh, governance, there is a lot about uh, inclusion. So, And both being from Argentina, I think it makes it easier perhaps for them to organize between them. So. Uh, Definitely 163, 168, and it, it's also uh, very good for our region. So, so much the better. Thank, thank you, Carlos. Renata, and then Michael. Support the merger, but um, would also like to remember working group new sessions formats and the possibility that they can pick up uh, sessions that aren't fit for the merger. That's a good reminder. Thank you, Renata. Michael and then Jack. Looking at this process, when you say major, to me, just the term itself, major, means in automatic inclusion. It means you've accepted the, the sessions to be part of the IGF 2017. Is that the case? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. The secretariat goes away, and I think in past years, um, a MAG member has been part of that process as well to go work with the parties to see if they can agree to a merger and pull together an appropriate proposal. And if those things happen, then it is given a slot in the, in the program. If not, and quite often, um, it doesn't work because it is too difficult to merge into two different groups, and um, then there is no slot awarded. Thank that you. answer your question? Thank you. You're welcome, Michael. Jack, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. And I apologize for raising my hand. It doesn't seem to be working. At one point, my hand doesn't come down. At one point, my hand doesn't come up, so I'm very confused as well. <clears throat> I'm really sorry about this, especially to the remote participants. Um, 
in relation to the merger, I would like to actually echo Cheryl's concerns. Uh, three mergers are complicated to begin with. It's good that um, 163 and 168 share some characteristics, so that might be more possible. But when they are vastly different in terms of also objectives and stuff, that, that doesn't always work. So just, just, I guess, a word of caution around that. Um, and the other is maybe also to give some recommendations around format that could make this work easier. For example, roundtable, when it's properly roundtable, that's one. Um, and the, the, the other thing I wanted to get some clarity around is around process, I suppose. So just to confirm that I'm getting it right, um, that there are two lists. One is one list is where it's a definite in um, with, um, that has no associated conditions and so forth. And then the second one is recommendations for improvements, which will be in the maybe list. And is there a third list, which is, yes, you're going in, but with recommendations for improvement or not? Or is that complicating things too much? Let's just stick with two. And then the other, the other clarity around process that I'm asking for is, are we going to go through every single proposal in the government proposed list? Or will we go towards the wild card um, list of proposals as well to see how we can look at uh, addressing some of the diversity and balances from there? Um, let me work backwards, I think. Um, yes, we are going through the eight proposals here that were on the government list, simply because that list had been created this morning, sent out separately. Secondly, we're going to go through the expanded wildcard list, which builds on the wildcards that had been submitted by MAG members over the last week or so, and further expanded, taking into account the imbalances conversation we had this morning, where we identified as a MAG imbalances such as the IPv6, some regional imbalances and that sort of thing. That's now in a second um, spreadsheet which was sent to the MAG at about 3 o'clock uh, Geneva time. That's the second part of this exercise. So let me see if you have a follow-up question on that and then we'll go to the other questions. If, if you don't mind, um, can, can I just recommend rather than going through every single proposal in the government list to revert back to the process that we seem to have begun with at the beginning of this conversation, which is to see if there is anybody who can represent um, any of the proposals and sort of come up with a good case for it. So I, I think we're going through the process. We agreed and we've already done seven of the eight. Okay. <laughs> Ignore me. <laughs> no, no. Um, so we're almost done with the government's list and we'll go on to the wild card list in a moment. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I understood your question on the different categorizations. I think what we have is definitely goes forward, um, but there, there may be some things we're expecting them to address as well. There's a conditional which needs to be, the proposals need to be revisited in light of the comments that were made here in the room and or came through the evaluation. And right now we have two in that category, 214 and 182. And that's usually, the, that has historically been left up to the Secretariat and their discretion to determine whether or not the appropriate comments were taken into account. Um, is diversity been addressed? Um, does the format meet, et cetera? And then determine whether or not there is space in the program for them as well. So those sort of fine tunings at the, at the very end. Um, Anya wants to say something from the chat. Anya, you have the floor. Thank you. Yes, just to pass the records from Alejandra that she supports Raquel's suggestion to merge 163, 168, and 176. And also Ginger supports the 163. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alejandra and, and Ginger. So we'll go forward um, that way. Raquel has stepped out of the room, which is a little unfortunate because I was going to ask her, if, since it was her idea, if she wanted to be the MAG member that would actually run point on the merger. But maybe we can ask her that when she comes, comes back in. I know Raquel, I'm sure her answer will be yes, but. She's very smart. <laughs> very smart to, no, it's never smart to leave the room in the middle of something you suggested. Um, we are now on um, 95, um, which is on the uh, seventh line there. How is digitization affecting democracy, trust, and public opinion? And it's a roundtable 90 minutes. was ranked 189. Um, the comments were that the session proposal... Um, 
is not very complete with only a sentence or two description and notes itself that the agenda is still under development. Several speakers only listed as notional. Was that one from Switzerland as well? I recognize the digitization. <laughs> um, um, Jorge, do you want to speak to that? I know this is a, a topic that Switzerland brings up very, very often, so. Thank you so much and excuse me for taking the, the floor again in this MAG meeting, but uh, thank you very much. The um, intention of this uh, workshop proposal was, of course, to, to, to bring up this uh, issue within the, within the IGF. Um, uh, uh, after the, the discussions we, we had with uh, different uh, stakeholders, with, uh, also with MAG members, we came to the conclusion that it made sense to um, uh, propose this session as a as a kind of broader session. So that's why we circulated it as a main session proposal uh, two or three weeks ago. Um, we will see tomorrow how that dis and discussion goes uh, forward and whether this has to be a formal main session or it might uh, receive uh, another format. So, um, provided that we uh, may uh, bring this uh, back uh, again tomorrow as a main session proposal or as another kind of uh, session proposal, uh, we think that in principle we could uh, skip it for the for the time being because it would be covered in a different part of the program. So I hope this helps and uh, speeds up uh, speeds up the the process uh, a little bit. Thank you. And thank you, Jorge. So Switzerland was the proposer of that workshop, and they're suggesting we put that to the side until we complete the main session discussions tomorrow, um, because the two are so heavily related. And I think that makes eminent sense. So we will go forward with that. That is ID number ninety five is put to the side for um, potentially subsequent review. The next one we have, we're down to the last two. Uh, item thir ID 36, rank 204, ever-changing digital reality. Government can face this challenge and survive Poland's success story. And then that's actually a flash session. I think I just saw it flash by. Oh, no, it is a flash session for 30 minutes. Is there anybody who has any comments or views? Mm -hmm. um, and then just briefly, the, the comment is this proposal, proposal is a flash session and not a workshop. Um, subjects quite vague, not specifically related to internet governance, focuses more on the readiness of government institutions like internal coordination mechanisms for the digital economy and SDGs. So is there anybody who wants to comment on that? My speaking cue is reloading, so is it? I don't know if Mamadoulo was still beforehand in the queue. So Mamadoulo. Thank you, Chair. It was just for supporting uh, a proposal uh, 176, but to exclude it from merge because it's tackling uh, different uh, issues relating to for French community. Thank you. Thank you. There is something seriously irritating happening with my computer. I'm getting one error after the other. Um, it must be overheated or something, um, which, <laughs> which accounts for the speaking cue. No, I, th I do think it's um, mine as well. So. Apologies for some of the choppiness here with respect to my ability to actually see and manage to the queue. Um, so uh, again, we're on this um, flash session, uh, ever-changing realities. I have um, Cheryl and G in the queue and Sala. Um, Thank you. I would support. Um, I would support giving this one a <laughs> chance. It's a 30-minute flash session. They clearly have a success story, and that could be very interesting to hear some of the things that they've worked through. And um, so, yeah, I, w I would support it. Thank you, Cheryl. G? Thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> uh, 
and Poland is a very friendly country, a friendly uh, uh, country of China, a uh, friend of China. I hate to to disagree, but uh, you know, in this world, we have more than 180, 90 countries, and there are many success stories. If um, if uh, each and every country give the chance to show their success story next year, we'll be choosing uh, among around, around 200 success stories. So we have to be very careful in creating such precedents because the theme of this proposal is, um, is, is not so outstanding. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Ji. Sala? Thank you, Chair. I'm only going to take the mic once uh, in relation to uh, what Raquel had sort of suggested in relation to the mergers. Um, I support what Lowe said, and also to keep the diversity in the internet, particularly um, Workshop 176, uh, which friends uh, proposed separate, but for it to be a flash session. And the rationale for it is, um, uh, currently, according to the IGF Secretariat Analytics, the flash sessions are at 4 percent, so there's room to uh, keep the modalities, I mean, to, inc to use that modality. I'm, I'm actually wondering if we can move it to the new session um, discussion, um, the new session formats, and ask Miguel and his work there to evaluate this and pull it in with the um, also other possible flash sessions um, when they actually get to that piece of work. Would that be a, a reasonable holding position? So I see some yeses, um, some noes, and again, Anya, if um, there's any um, input from the online participants, um, strongly one way or the other, I'll, I'll give you a moment to <laughs> hear from them and pull it in. So I have um, Juan, I have a cue. I have Juan, and then we have a few more. Thank you, Chair. Um, now that I'm going by no, by the rules that I thought that I was being lenient with that, I was, now that we're being objective and critical, I think 36 doesn't make the grade because of the subject. As a matter of fact, I wanted to merge 36 with 95, the one from Switzerland, because it's, it has some relations if you read the proposal. Now that 95 is still pending for whatever, I think that 36 does not have enough substance to be in and all. Uh, whatever, um, regardless of the of, of the modality of, of of the format. So I, I don't think that um, the only way is to merge with some other, like 95, because it has some point of of contact if you read. But I, I don't see if we, if we are being now like that. Because the same happened with 136, 33, and once it did, and maybe MERT could have enough substance for, for standing in their feet. I think 36 does not, is not enough uh, if we're doing this criteria. You can, I don't want to get into detail, but you, you can read the proposal and you can see that it, it, la, it, it, it it's <laughs> deservedly got to 204. It needs a lot of improvement, and I think that is not the path we're going now. So I won't, uh, I think that we should uh, move through it. And by a matter of fact, what happened with 167 that was before that? Uh, we jumped 167. You, you jump it. We're we'll going come back, back to 167. We'll come back to 167. Okay. Thank you. I will talk in 167. Okay. I think the proposal in front of us with 36 is given it was a flash session. Um, that we actually set it aside and asked the uh, working group on new session the formats. Will not wait a slot, no? Sorry? If it's a flash session, it doesn't take a slot to be it, 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 well, but, the, but if we have a lot of flash sessions, 80 becomes 84 because the flash sessions are 30 minutes, not 60 or 90. Maybe another one, not this one, but uh, we have a working group that's actually addressing the new session formats and last year what they did was they looked at some of those that had been waitlisted but not approved and they actually went and said, would you like to take advantage of a 30, one of these new session formats or something. My proposal is that we do the same thing with this one and make that ultimate review a part of that working group. 
if everybody's okay, but I see heads nodding in the room. Um, if somebody wants to object strongly to that, um, then please um, let me know either online or in the room. Flavio has a short comment. Yeah, just to, to agree with uh, Juan that, uh, that this proposal uh, has uh, many problems and should be strongly improved if, if it uh, should take it. Uh, it's not clear which is the mechanism that shall be presented. They, they speak about a, a multi-stakeholder mechanism, but all people invited are from government. They're not um, really a multi-stakeholder session. So that there would be a lot, even if we take it as in the new session format or a flash, flash session, we should uh, give this message that they, they need to improve the, the session. Yeah? No, I ag agree very much with giving that. And moving it to the working group on new session for doesn't mean it is guaranteed a slot. It needs to go through that process um, ultimately. So Anya, is there anything in the online chat room or Lewis? Yes, there is it, I think. So in the room. Oh, uh, I think I would like to support these proposals though it might not be too strong, uh, but because this is also first time proposers and I remember that the flash session was designed to give space for the first time proposers, which is usually in the trend, they are very focusing on their own experience. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shida. So I still hear support for um, kind of putting it into the flash session and working there to both improve it and um, determine whether or not it goes forward as a part of the flash session, new session activities. New session, yes. Okay, so um, moving back up one to the one that I inadvertently skipped, which is um, ID number 167, ranked 201, Internet Governance in Times of the Digital Economy. That's also a flash session. Uh, round oh, roundtable, 90 minutes. Latin America, um, the comment was, it's unclear what is the aim of the workshop. It's the one above it, I think. Unclear what is the aim of the workshop. Too little information about the format, proposed outcome, and added value to the discussion. We've had many similar discussions in the past, so it would be good to see what are the new expected contributions, and the format could be more participatory. Um, question on whether or not it was possible to merge with other proposals as they're not certain what that workshop aimed to achieve. There was another comment which said, very interesting proposal would benefit from more um, diversity in speakers and possible merger with a similar proposal. Is there anybody who would like to make a comment um, for or not? Juan, you had a comment earlier, Juan. Yes, this was one of the 53 proposals that, uh, so I, I revise it. And I, I give it favorable um, scores, but I don't think it's for 90 minutes. I think it should be uh, 60 minutes would be more than enough because it's a subject that is, has been treated before. And the other comments that you said there are valid. So I think this should go, but with those two, th those will be my recommendation to put it into 60 minutes that leaves some space and also to the, the other comments that you mentioned, the diversity of the speakers. The speakers has to be uh, improved, the, the speaker, the category of speakers and all that. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. I have Cheryl and G in the queue. I just wanted to make a very brief comment just generally on flash sessions because I know in the past I've been to flash sessions where there's only been one organization presenting. And so with a 30 minute time slot, it is very hard to get, you know, the full five or six panel, uh, you know, normal setup, full diversity or, or whatever, however you want to descri describe it. So I do think we should think about the flash sessions um, just generally in terms of being able to especially include some of the newer voices and let people sort of, if they have new ideas or new things, that this would be the type of space where that could be presented as opposed to some of the other round tables, et cetera. Thanks. Thank you, Cheryl. G, you have the floor. Thank you, Chad. Um, uh, given the comments you have shown us, um, can we ask the proposer to merge this one with other, you know, uh, proposals in in the shortlist, which you know 
which is also touch which also touches on digital economy, etc. I think that's a good comment, G. Thank you. We would need um, a suggestion of the other workshops that it might be considered as a merge candidate for, but there were a, a couple of comments supporting that. Julian, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, this uh, proposal is coming from Colombia, a country I came from, and uh, I can imagine why digital economy is uh, there as a um, thematic tag, uh, because we are discussing uh, a lot uh, at local level. Um, I agree with uh, Juan's comments. I think uh, the proposal has a lot to improve, but um, I will recommend to keep it on the uh, uh, list, but with all the comments, uh, of course, that has been addressed here. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. So, yes, Mojina, you have you have the floor. Yeah, uh, in principle, uh, I agree with the uh, uh, comments. It can be uh, merged with another uh, topic that uh, almost uh, the same thing. I think this uh, the the comment is right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I assume that was with respect to you thought it was for a merger candidate, um, which was uh, an earlier comment and not Julian's and Juan's. Uh, Jack, you have the floor. Um, so this is really more of a, a support for the previous flash session to go to the to to Miguel's um, working group to look through, but also to raise a question around, um, are we, do we still have the lightning, lightning talks? And what would the difference be between the purpose of a lightning talk and a flash session in terms of providing a space for um, new and interesting voices and perspectives to a topic? Let me see, is Miguel on the call? I know he was speaking earlier. We had difficulty hearing him, but if he is, he would be uh, the best person to respond to that. Yeah, he's in the call. Could Miguel, could you respond to Jack's question? It seems that he's not connected to audio for some reason. Well, he has to type. If, if I may. Go ahead, Jack. Um, if I may, I just want to support the lightning talk as a format. I think it was really innovative. It was really a fantastic space to, prevent, to provide more spaces for different kinds of points of view that isn't maybe appropriate or needs the length of time for a flash, flash session or a workshop, um, that I would fully support that if there is scope for that. I, I, I do think he is intending to um, put that forward to the working group, but we can verify that later. Um, Cheryl, you're on the floor. I would just briefly agree with Jack. I think I thought that they were a good format as well. So the question in front of us is for workshop ID number 167, Internet Governance. And I th think that we've had two proposals. One is that it's a candidate for a merger. Um, I think agreement um, that there is a need for increased diversity, suggesting that it be 60 minute, not a 90 minute panel. Could Okay, you're looking for the floor again? Okay, you're not in my queue, but please go ahead. Yes, um, I think that what we, I agree with you that this is a merger candidate, but when we say merger candidate, we should not we really look into merge with the, with the top ones, because you know, the top ones are already good as it is. I think this is a major candidate with the new ones that we're going to review from now on, on the rest of the day. I, I, I will suggest that, just to have it. And yes, I agree. Maybe, maybe if, if in the new ones that we will see, there's some about digital economy, then this is a merge candidate for that, and then we will bring those two in only one slot. That's my recommendation. No, thank you. So I, I think we're coming to a point of agreement which says that um, this workshop um, would go under the conditional accepted, might be a candidate for a merger, merger. certainly needs um, some areas of improvement. 
Um, might be 60 minutes, not versus 90 minutes, but we will put that under the conditional acceptance. On to our last one on the government list before we start the uh, so-called wild card list. So we have ID number 202, Internet of Things, supportive role of smart solutions in the decision-making process, was ranked 243. It's a round table of 60 minutes um, put in by the African, within the African group. And it's just some of the comments are, the aims of the workshop are unclear, although a discussion surrounding um, Internet of Things and the decision-making process is important. It's unclear how the discussion would contribute to the development of an appropriate agenda. Limited information on diversity and format, which indicates that the substance is, a uh, submission is not, um, not thought through, but it's an important topic. Need greater speaker diversity, et cetera. The same as so, before. The same as before, meaning um, see if we can work to improve it. Or candidate for merger with <laughs> another. Okay. Is there anybody who wants to speak differently to that particular workshop? Uh, Zena? Yes, uh, maybe this workshop, because I was reviewing the workshop that I evaluated, there is a workshop, I think, uh, similar to this one. It's number 48. Maybe we can try to merge both. But let me uh, confirm the other. 48. 48. It sounds like this um, workshop is in the same category as the discussion we just had, which is we put it um, in as a maybe, we examine it, and all these would have secretariat support, and I think we need to identify a MAG member to help us work that as well, and we can go work that offline um, to either look to um, improve it along the lines of some of the comments from the reviewers and or possible um, <coughs> merge candidate. So with that, we have completed the government list. Um, unless they're, uh, Frederick. I just see, I just saw quickly on the, um, on the screen, the comments made, uh, saying that there are no, uh, uh, speakers from, uh, from, uh, uh, from actually one of the two speakers that we propose is from Africa, is from Benin, uh, works at the, uh, Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, but it's, it's Diversity is on the panel already. Mm -hmm. Needs to be fixed, and uh, uh, but it's al it's already on the panel. Okay, thank you. We'll we'll take that forward when we when we um, contact the proposers for for the other areas of improvement. Thank you, um, Christina. Yes, uh, sorry to come in very quickly, but um, um, because just then I was mentioning um, uh, the proposal number 48 on Internet of, that has the tag of Internet of Things, and looking quickly at the proposal, um, although the speakers, I, I think the evaluation problem is that the diversity of speakers is not right, but then I see there are speakers from the MENA region and from governments, so I think there might be a technical problem, and so while we're looking at uh, mergers, maybe we should relook at 48's evaluation. Maybe something technically happened uh, wrong. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Zina, too. We'll have um, the Secretariat look at that. Uh, so that actually um, completes the review of the governments again, which was one of the areas of imbalance that everybody felt um, quite strongly about through this morning's discussion. Mabadulo, I'm sorry, did you want the floor? No. No? Okay. Um, we would now go to the wild card process, which was the list that um, the MAG has put forward um, on the basis of, again, the imbalances discussion we had this morning. So that document is the document that Chengatai circulated at about 3 o'clock this afternoon. It's both in a Google Doc format plus an Excel spreadsheet. And Sala, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, now I'm able to make this uh, comment and offer uh, uh, this particular wildcard because um, the analytics have uh, further aggregated uh, the sub-regionals and I want to thank the IGF Secretariat. I can see the SIDS and the MENA and the APR newcomer blocks. So I'd like to um, 
proposed workshop four, which uh, scored uh, 3.777 and ranked 160. Uh, it's uh, SIDS, a small islands developing states uh, proposal. It's there. It's, it's there. You jump to four, line 14, right, in the spreadsheet, the one that's showing in the room there. Small island developing states roundtable. Are we running out of resources and bandwidth? Yeah. We'll so, there. What, so what we what we tried to do was take the wild card list again, which came out of the MAGS process over the last week or so, which was initially um, used to identify those workshops that the reviewers thought deserved a closer look. We added to it over the lunch period. Um, Wonderful. So with with those. Just to be clear, we added over the, with, the, with the imbalances that the room had identified, um, the secretary and I went back and pulled out the workshops that specifically had been referred to here in the room, and that's what's now in the spreadsheet. Fantastic. I'm happy. Thank you. Excellent. Um, so I think that how many are on that spreadsheet, by the way? <laughs> There's, uh, 20, over 23. 23? Well, we just did 10, and the first 10 are always harder than, than, the, than the others. Um, uh, sorry, um, I mean, at this point, uh, I, I'll come to you in a moment. I would suggest, I know there's been some conversations in a chat room, but I haven't been able to, to follow it. Um, suggest that we stay with the same process um, and again, categorizing them according to the categorizations we've been using. Um, we have not actually filled up a significant number of slots. And in fact, I think the secretary has said earlier, we have a few additional slots given some of the flash sessions that were in, in the accepted proposals, the 72, not the conversation of the last two hours. So, I mean, I, I actually think we're doing quite well here. Um, I think we need to find a way to speed the process up a little bit, if at all possible, without obviously um, short circuiting the discussion. But that means we would go up to the first item, which is um, ID6, rank 140. But they are repeated. The same uh, workshops are repeated in the list. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and 182 is here. Yeah, Okay, well, why don't we just take um, one moment and let the secretary clean those out, and then we'll, s we'll see more easily what we're dealing with. I can let you do that um, in the background, um, Eleanor, without, you know, Everybody sort of staring you. Sorry, wisdom. You have <laughs> come at wisdom. You have the floor. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, the, this workshop that I've seen, uh, workshop 200, I see this workshop to be very interesting. And then uh, I don't understand the reason why the this particular workshop didn't make it to the the 70. Uh, the list, uh, the top list. Um, this particular workshop seek to address uh, the issue. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it seeks to address the issues of uh, electricity and then uh, internet access, and then uh, taking into consideration the developing uh, countries. Uh, we can't. Uh, I think these two items, electricity and then. Uh, Connectivity. I mean, they they go alongside. They go together, and um, I'm of the view that we should consider this um, workshop because it falls in line with um, the connecting the next billion. Yeah. So let's take while while Eleanor um, cleans the list up. Let's start with, um, and we'll go back up to the top in a moment. But let's start with ID proposal number two hundred, the one that Wisdom just introduced, which was ranked ninety-seven. It's two networks will shape your digital future. Um, it's a roundtable of sixty minutes, and we're pulling up the comments here in a moment. It's.
Um, let me just finish the comments so that everybody who's participating in these various chat rooms and things can, just a second, Sagoon. The comments that were received as a part of the valuation is, it's one of the dimensions of IoT that could be merged with others in a more general approach or could be a new format session. Another one said, is that part of the same one yeah. as well? Said it's well organized and interesting and it would be better if you could include one or more speakers from the technical community. Um, so with that, we're either looking for um, support for the proposal to go forward or any um, suggestions for um, changes to the process. So Shagoon, you have the floor. I think the queue is still empty. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Chair. Uh, first and foremost, I'm uh, extremely surprised that uh, this particular workshop uh, it's not taken as part of the um, workshop that should have really been taken. And probably because from the point of view of the fact that the, the proposal came from the U.S. But really, if we are talking about the connecting the next billion policy options, you know, in Africa, one of the, thing, uh, the <coughs> challenges that we have is electricity. Electricity. Then number two, when I look at the content, especially the speakers that are being invited here, uh, I'm so motivated that um, I can see a fusion of a private sector and the government working to, uh, to, together to talk about these issues under this proposal. Then let me give an example. I have, um, it is yeah, a I'm privilege to have someone like um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Funke Opeke, who has been one of the few female in Africa that is spearheading the investment in the undersea cable in Nigeria and the whole of Africa. And um, at the Nigerian government, um, at, the, um, at our own national level, I'm talking about Nigerian governance, it, um, Nigerian internet, um, um, Nigeria Internet Governance Forum, we've done a lot to bring people like this into the discussion, uh, the dialogue uh, <coughs> mechanism of what we are doing. Now, when we see people like this coming for the Internet Governance Forum, you know, it, we are motivated. Why? Because these guys are talking about issue, um, the fundamental issues that has to do with development in Africa. So I want to push strongly that this workshop should be considered, and I, I think I will consider it um, unfair on the part of whoever that evaluated this proposal in the first instance without considering the fact that the impact of this workshop has a lot to do with the policy options on connecting the next billion in Africa. Thank you. No, thank, thank you, Shagun. Wisdom? You want to come in on the same topic? No? Okay. Um, so we have Flavio and then G. Flavio, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, it's not a comment on this particular uh, uh, workshop, but again, on, on the procedure we are following, just to be sure. So we have a list of 20, 22 uh, proposals there. And our exercise now is to see which of those are good proposals, of course, have support from the MAG members, but they uh, help uh, compensate the, 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 the gaps we see in underrepresented regions, non WEOG, uh, or subjects that are important that are missing among the top 72, and things like that. So I would say that when we go through the, the proposals, if the proposal definitely compensates for some of those gaps, then we can put it on the, on the definite list. If not, if it is a very good proposal, maybe in the maybe list, but uh, we, we should uh, real, really stick to the, the criteria we have for, for analyzing those proposals there. Not just because they are good. There are lots of other good proposals that are not there. Oops, and I agree with that, Flavio, and we should be okay because that's how this list was created, was out of the imbalanced discussion we had this morning. So 
Um, I'm, my working assumption is that it's on this list because somebody actually said in the context of the discussion that it was in a balance. Most of these actually come through the regional imbalance. And then we, of course, had the IPv6 one, which is, I assume, up there um, somewhere as well. So I would say that when then MAG members uh, give uh, their support for those proposals that they explain how they uh, correct those imbalances that we have. Right, so when somebody argues for a proposal in here, you're suggesting that they need to comment specifically on the imbalance that it's yeah. addressing. Yeah, yeah. I think that'll be a fairly easy argument because I think most of them were, again, from the regional discussion we had this morning, but I think that's a good, uh, good point. Um, we have um, G in the queue and then Jack. G, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to uh, propose uh, several wild cards uh, for selection from the perspective of Asia Pacific. Uh, the first one I would propose is no original number 12. Uh, so, Ji, just yeah. sorry, just yeah. so we don't get lost, that's ID number 12, and are they already on this list or are they uh, no, beyond no, this they're, list? They're not, they're not, uh, it, this one is uh, not on the list. It's very close to the bottom of the list. Uh, which is original number 12, but the, the, the current selection, uh, it's 77. Current numbering is 77. Do you find? It's, it's, uh, the, the, the theme is social responsibility and ethics in artificial intelligence and the East and the West dialogue. This topic is really important um, as uh, Professor Hawking once said that if we cannot handle this issue properly, one day the human society may be erased by machines. And we people in, in the arms control and disarmament field, we have been working on it for many years, particularly under the, the, co the convention on certain conventional weapons. We have, set, we have been setting up a government expert groups to discuss this and uh, we will for, for two times and we will uh, have another session of governmental groups on this topic again at the end of this year so um, I want you know I hope that uh, colleagues can at attach high importance to this and it is this topic is certainly deserves respect and importance and uh, the screening results is also not so bad. It's, uh, it's close. So I hope this one could be a good candidate, uh, be treated as a priority. Um, the second I would like to propose. Uh, Gee, actually, yeah. could, we, could we stay with that one so we can close on it? It actually oh, was okay. on the list. So okay. it is on the list of wild cards that's in front of it. It's in row 18 there in the Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we can just, you did a good job introducing it, so if we can just close on it, then we can okay. move to the next one. So um, can I come back to the next uh, proposals uh, later on? Yes. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, uh, absolutely. Okay. Um, so the proposal we're actually evaluating right now is on line 18 in the Excel spreadsheet. Um, it was ranked 77, as she said, social responsibility and ethics and artificial intelligence in East-West dialogue. And as um, and he pointed out, it's ranked quite highly, 77, when our cutoff was 72. Is there anybody who wants to speak to that particular proposal? Um, again, we are trying to place them in one of our previously agreed categories. I saw heads nodding in the back of the room that said it was a good proposal when G was speaking. Um, Apologies to those that are online, because I obviously can't see your heads nodding, but I'm trying to get some, some discussion going here. Um, Jack was in the queue. Jack, did you have a comment on this proposal or something else? If it's something else, I'll come back to you after. Okay. So we have, I see some thumbs up in the back of the room as well. Are people comfortable going forward with this as a definite? See lots of head nodding. Let me give a chance to those that are in the online queue to see if there's any strong objection to moving forward. What number is it? It was ranked 77, and the proposal number is 12. 
it was Asia Pacific, it was a newcomer. If I were to use Juan's earlier words, I'd say it was a no-brainer. But <laughs> All right, so I, I see support for going forward um, with that one. We're jumping around, around the list a little bit, which can make it hard to follow uh, which one we're actually um, talking to. But, um, Gee, could you just do us a quick favor and just tell us the numbers of the other proposal you wanted to put forward so we can see if it's on there? If not, we'll add it to the list so that we can all look at the same. Okay. Um, the first, uh, the second one is the original number 42, uh, not 42, original number 79, which is uh, digital economy 2.0, the rise and the challenge of platform economy. And the next one is. Um, the, the, the next one is the original number 42, Internet of Things for Smart City, Green and Sustainable Development, Sustainability. And uh, another one is govern, uh, Governance Innovation in the Age of Sharing Economy. What, which one? I forgot. I forgot the the number. Oh, it's it's original uh, one hundred thirty three. The current numbering is one one hundred four. The ranking was one hundred four. Yeah, yes, okay, but yes, one thirty three is the proposal number. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's. Um. I mean, I'm. I'm I think it's helpful that G is putting those in because in this morning's discussion, most of the other folks that spoke on regional imbalances actually gave us specific proposal numbers. Um, we didn't actually get that from Asia, so Eleanor and I went through and just went down through the next big bulk and said those that are ranked highly should be here on the list to get us started in the, um, in the Asian context. So we will add those to the list um, and then if I'll let you come in in a moment, and then I would actually suggest that we go back up to the top and work our way through one at a time, just so we can all keep track of which ones we've done or not. So, Flavio, there, there's the proposal that is in the, on the top there, the proposal number 75, which is ranked 58. This is a mistake. It's already on the top 72. We don't need it there. We'll go away and look at that one. Make sure that it's both the rank ranking and the ranking proposal number is 58. Yeah. All right. It's already selected. Yeah. All right, so we'll go. Yay, another one done. <laughs> little steps, little steps. Um, so we had Jack in the queue, and then um, I'd like to suggest that we go back up to the top. We'll add those um, workshops in that you just mentioned, G, but we'll just work our way through the top so we can, everybody, it would be much easier for people to follow if we're actually working consistently through the list. Jack, you have the floor. Thanks, Lynn. Um, I guess just a um, suggestion on maybe process, because we seem to be sort of running up and down a little bit, um, in that if, you, if the aim is really to address imbalances which we've already identified, one is governmental participation, which we've dealt with, the other is around regional participation, um, which we seem to be dealing with, and then the other is around topical as well. Um, maybe we can just do it like chunk by chunk. So then now we're sort of looking at really trying to respond to the regional imbalance. And the regional imbalance, the two regions that were specifically mentioned earlier, actually three that were specifically mentioned um, earlier with quite a lot of um, uh, agreement, um, was around um, Africa, Eastern Europe, um, MENA, and then to some degree Asia Pacific. So just to make sure that we're not losing those as well, um, and, and maybe, pr maybe also according to priority of actual regions that that has quite a lot of um, disparity. Um, and, and then I really support Flavio's um, suggestion in that the person who's recommending it to really begin from there, that this is what we're trying to respond to and that there's also two or three other imbalances that this can also support. Um, and then to move to its topical, otherwise we might sort of um, get lost a little bit in the process. And then finally, I guess it's about um, um, putting forward wildcards um, to also be quite, I think um, there's, there's been some some forwarding of wildcards 
in the email list as well as yesterday and today, and there's also been quite a lot of um, restraint um, in terms of trying to think through what's the best to address some of this. So to, to bear that in mind as well as we are proposing this. Um, yeah. Okay, let me um, comment. I, I actually think um, that is what we're doing here. Um, I have one question for the secretary. I think we haven't possibly said, okay, these are the ones from MENA, for instance, so let's go look at MENA. Yeah, but we went, chunk a, but, so I think addressing them chunk by chunk would be um, a, a good improvement. Um, but just to be clear in terms of what's in the list, we actually did go to Eastern Europe and we went to MENA, we went to the folks that commented in the room to try and fill out this spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Um, I mentioned earlier, we, we didn't actually manage to get anybody from Africa um, during the lunch hour to say whether or not there were any additional proposals you wanted considered from the African region. And that offer is still very much open in terms of are there um, some additional proposals. And it was a similar conversation with Asia as well, because while we had you know, quite, a, quite a discussion on the fact that Asia wasn't adequately represented, there had not been any specific suggested workshops. So Eleanor and I went away and did a process yeah, to yeah, try and pull some in. So I think we've now had a few more from G that we can put on the list. Um, the ones which came through the MAG wildcard process are in that list as well, as I understand it, right, Eleanor? Uh, yes, I can confirm that. So uh, just to uh, make the list a little bit clearer for people, Everything that's on the top and that doesn't have a parenthetical notation um, were the suggestions that came through the MAG list and uh, up until uh, this morning. And then everything below that are some things that we added in for um, to, to bring in some potential regional diversity. Um, and they, you know, that's why they have the, the regional note in parentheses. And then you will add in the three additional ones that just came in from Asia afterwards. Um, also that the wild, oh, my mic is still on, sorry. Also that the wild card process in the beginning was not meant to address some of these um, deficiencies, right? It was really interesting sessions that we thought we should support. So then that's also useful to say then we're still supporting this wild card because it's still responding to X, Y, Z in some extent. We can choose to go through the top 10 up there, which came through the wild card process. Um, and then move through the regional or vice versa. <laughs> um, start at the top and work our way through. Let's do that then. So start with um, the first proposal that's up there, which was ID number six, rank 140, collaborative community development program, um, learn internet governance, promoting youth on the table. Um, if it's up in that top list, it's because a MAG member actually said this is worthy of another look. So we need that MAG member to, to introduce it or represent it here and then again to decide its disposition. So who, who suggested that workshop? Was that Renata? Renata, you have the floor. Could you please introduce it? Um, yes, I suggested that um, proposal. Asia is quite a big place. So you have there eight countries represented, three as confirmed uh, presenters, two co-organizers. So I think also when we're talking about uh, regional representation, uh, and let's include Asia workshops, I'm all for it. But how many countries in Asia? So uh, this is an incredibly diverse proposal. It has, it is by youth proposers, by new proposers uh, mostly, and it has a few, uh, probably uh, a few problems in writing, but it should, it should make it just for the sake of uh, the, the complexity of the proposal itself. And I would leave another, uh, fought for the MAG, uh, the diversity uh, uh, field on the form. I noted uh, in one of my, my, my myths about the evaluation that this form received a lot of letter of intentions. We will have this, we will have that. Uh, this is a proposal that doesn't have a huge number of confirmed speakers. However, the number that it has is quite varied, and the number of, of speakers to be confirmed is very specific, very detailed, and also varied. So I think this is something the MAG should evaluate as well, uh, because uh, 
clearly this was well fought with eight Asia countries, Asian countries. So it's uh, incredible to have this amount of diversity and stakeholder groups too. Any comments, reflections from the MAG? Um, again, if they're up here on this wild card list, it's because um, they were below the cutoff point which we'd established. Um, that may or may not mean they had some deficiencies in terms of the criteria we were looking for. But there was a request from a MAG member. There are only nine or ten of them um, that we take a harder look at this. I note also, I think, that it was a newcomer's proposal as well. Is that right? I think I saw that. G, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think number six and number 16 have something uh, in common. Um, they're all talking about youth, but uh, access to cyberspace for youth is a, is a, is a dilemma for, for the adult, uh, adults and, and, and the whole society. And at first, if we have to consider which age is good for them to access uh, use the computers. And uh, in the meantime, we, we have to do our best that uh, the, the, the kids make good use of the, their computers and the smartphones for education, for, for career, etc. So uh, I think these two topics can very much marry each other. Um, let them talk to each other to see, you know, to, to be a, a interesting session. In the meantime, in the same time that we we have to manage the use of internet and the smartphones, computers by the youth. In this, on on the other hand, we have to encourage them to use it in a responsible and a, and a valuable way. Thank you. Thank you, Ji. Any comments? Anybody online? Yes, Ginger would like to speak. And Ginger, you have the floor. Ginger, you have the floor. No, no, now. we. Yes, thank we, you very much. I've been speaking to my. No, thank you, everyone. Um, I had put myself in the electronic queue a bit earlier, so unfortunately, this comment comes up a little bit late when we were talking about regional uh, divisions, and I want that I. Jack mentioned two different areas. I would like to include as a geographical region. This is the only Ginger, you're breaking area like we do may now or smaller. Ginger, you're breaking up a lot. Um, we've we're not able to understand understand you here and I'm not certain if the scribes captured it um, appropriately. Now is it possible for you to type did it? Is it possible for you to type it in? Where can I type it in? Unfortunately, we're not managing to really uh, cover our, our management um, today, so I can write an email. Are you in the Adobe Connect room? If you could type it there, or even if you have someone on the... I, I myself am challenged in my computer today here, so... Um, but if you're in the Adobe um, Connect room, if you can uh, type it in there, we can read it out.
So Ginger's actually typing that the um, SID's workshop number four should be considered as a geographical group. And you're still actually right on point, um, Ginger, because we hadn't actually closed on that um, on that item. I don't know if there's anything further you wanted to say. And then uh, she's also saying that the biometric one should also be considered for geographical diversity and a topic that has no other workshop or reference. Um, can you give us the workshop number for that one? Unless I can tell by the title, but uh, 282, uh, which is on there. It's item number nine. Okay. Thank you, Ginger, and uh, apologies to everybody for you know the various um, complexities here in, in the systems. I really appreciate everybody working with it, and, and um, I know I can testify that we're all trying our best, and really appreciate the you know the patience and the support. Um, so I, again, uh, Elizabeth is next in the queue. I'll come to Elizabeth in a moment. The item that we were uh, uh, actually she was speaking to item four. Um, we were actually on item six, the collaborative community development program. So we'll keep your comments for um, ID number four um, when we get there again, Ginger. If we can close on six, um, so far we've had um, support for six moving forward. We had one suggestion that um, six and 16 be merged. Um, I don't feel any consensus. In fact, I'm not feeling a lot of enthusiasm from the room for either one of those two proposals. And and um, we need to move forward. So Elizabeth, was your comment on that proposal or to a different point? If it's to a different point, I'd ask you to wait, but if it's to that, please. No, I was actually going to, I was going to say that I, I, I thought the proposal um, put forward was lacking in clarity on, on some of the substance, but that it is a proposal that could be improved. And there is, I think a lot of effort that's gone in to actually have all of these different people from the region engage um, and for youth to be interested in this topic and to um, work together on a capacity building approach. So I, I actually want to support um, six. And would that be a um, definitely in or conditional once it addresses the? My, from my point of view, it, it definitely needs someone to help coach and develop uh, it further. Um, to improve, and I, maybe there are other comments on more and more specifically, and and uh, but I, so so I think for it to be to realize its potential, it needs a little bit of coaching. But beyond that, I think it's it's got so much merit that we should consider it. Thank you, Elizabeth. Kenta, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, sorry for not using the electronic queue because, you know, the number 16 is the proposal from my company, <laughs> Japan Corporation. And uh, uh, due to the uh, conflict of interest, you know, I cannot, I don't want to evaluate this session. But uh, actually, the, you know, uh, the organizer is the first time uh, proposal. And also, that this, uh, this uh, session is from the you know, uh, Japanese private sector. It, this is the only one proposal. And uh, actually, you know, uh, regarding the merger of the uh, proposal number six and also the 16th, you know, I, I can totally accept that merger. So uh, because there are similarity of the content and also the similarity of the diversity of the speakers. So I totally accept that you know, uh, mergers. And, uh, uh, I have one procedural question apart from the, uh, the this merger of the you know, number six and also number sixteen. Uh, you know, I I saw that you know uh, each MAG member you know uh, could you know uh, propose only one you know uh, proposal you know for the uh, wild card, uh, but you know so far you know uh, some of the MAG members you know are proposing you know some proposals for the wild card. So I'm not quite sure whether this is uh, consistent or not. So I'd appreciate if you could clarify this point. Thank you. I think we're. Um, I think it was a good good point. I think we're um, kind of conflating two processes. We had the wild card process, which the MAG members were meant to. Um, keep track as they went through their evaluations whether or not they thought some workshops which didn't meet the criteria and they weren't ranking highly still therefore for other reasons deserved um, a subsequent review by the MAG. 
Um, that's a different exercise than the exercise we went through this morning, which said, um, are there some imbalances that we specifically want to address, which is where the second half of the list and the government proposals that we just went through came from. Um, so they are slightly different, even though I think we're tending to call them all kind of a, a wild-carded list. So I hope that was clear. And, and okay, thank you very much. That's clear. And then to the comment on 6 and 16, um, Renata has, um, has a question, and then we'll come back and see if we can close on, on those. Renata, you have the floor. Yes, uh, some of the proposals are even the same in uh, 6 and 16. However, the theme is very different. Uh, youth and children, uh, two different topics. But I think proposals can work together and uh, there can be a merger. Uh, I will, however, still remember that um, I think it's important we don't force proposers because we do have the possibility of the new session formats. So if it can't be done, it just can't be done. But uh, I agree that could be a merger. Uh, so what we've had in the room here, I think, was some support for six standalone um, being accepted conditionally with improvements and a couple of comments that perhaps it should be considered for merger with 16. Um, you know, when I look at the two, I actually think they seem quite different, and I think mergers really are difficult to drive. Um, I don't know if we want to take a moment and um, think about 16 and see where not we th whether or not we think 16 could stand alone with support. Otherwise, we're talking about supporting 6 alone or suggesting 6 and 16 merge. I think those are the two choices in front of us with respect to 6. Is there anybody who wants to speak directly to 16? Um, with respect to whether or not it should be considered as a standalone. Alternatively, we could suggest to those proposers for six um, that they go away and look at some of the content in 16 and some of the proposers and see if there's anything they want to pull into their workshop. It's a good example of why mergers are quite difficult to, to drive, easy to suggest, difficult to, to drive and to manage. Any strong positions one way or the other? Flavio? Again, the fact that we are preparing, trying to prepare two types of lists, one with the definite accepted workshops and the other one with the maybe ones. Because I would say uh, I would support six. Uh, not OK, the, 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 the subject is, of course, relevant, but it also adds uh, to, the, to the regional balance because it comes from Asia. The many Many countries in Asia are represented there, but I just want to to to, to point to the fact that uh, below we have many other proposals that are also come from Asian countries, and that are very better ranked than this one. So I would not put this uh, proposal six on the final list yet. Uh, Elizabeth, you have the floor. Thank you, Flavio. Thank you. I'm, I'm not going to disagree with um, the uh, rationale for what um, Flavier just said. I think it makes a lot of sense. I, I, I did want to make the comment that as we go through these wild cards, since we're doing them first, when we add a wild card, or can we note that when there's a regional or, or something gap that's being addressed by that particular one? Because I do note that some of the ones that you found lower down were plucked out sort of in, in a search to add that and they hadn't already been pulled out in the wild card process and I know it's becoming confusing but I think that might also help us in terms of how are we faring in terms of pro progressing along that that uh, goal and just to be clear the ones that we added from Asia we literally just dropped down below the 72 and then looked through the next I'm not sure what the full bucket was and grabbed those that were higher ranking and put them up just so we had something to to work right. With. I, I guess my point is to say that if, for example, we find in the wild cards and we put three Asia ones in the bucket, it's good for us to remember that so that we actually realize we might not need to add five others right. so and vice versa, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So I think it, it, 
the suggestion by Flavio was that we put six in the um, conditional acceptance maybe bucket. And I think there was support for that in the room. Um, I'm not sure what to do with 16 because the only conversation we've had on 16 was that it was a merger for six. And I think Renata is sort of questioning whether or not that's appropriate or it's going too far. Um, why don't we just put that to the side for a moment and when we come back and revisit six, take 16 at the same time? Does that work unless there's support for moving quickly on our discussion on 16? tells me something when there's nobody who wants to stand up and, and support it, even though it was a wild card that came from this group. Juan, you have the floor. Why are we seeing it in that order? Could, couldn't be ordered in, uh, by rank in order to avoid what Flavio just said? Maybe we, sh we should... Uh, we should um, Sort it for there. You can do click there and sort it. And we, if we do it by rank, we avoid what Flavio just said. Are people okay with doing that? And did we add the three that um, G put in? And they're sorry, I'm not, they're in the sheet. Not yet. Okay. So she's still adding those G. We'll add them and then we'll um, re-rank. Um, Yeah, no, she's just adding the, the three that um, were suggested by G and putting the appropriate links into the spreadsheet. And then we'll rank. We can go forward without those at the moment, and those will be in, in shortly. <coughs> if we can actually work from the spreadsheet at the same time as Eleonora is updating the spreadsheet. <laughs> okay, um, so continuing with the process here then, the um, rank is 73, the ID was 184, um, it's surveillance from the margins, um, that is a newcomers and, and Asia Pacific region. I mean, is there anybody who wants a discussion on that? Again, our cutoff was 72. This is 73. Is it, to use Juan's words, a no-brainer? I want to allow time for those that are online as well to see if there's anybody who wants to come in on this. Otherwise, given our previous logic on similar discussions, I would say that we pull this in as a definite... Pablo, did you have a... Uh, the link is not working. Yes, I had a problem. I, you, put, you can have the PDF open, you know, the PDF have, a, have an index in the bookmark, and you could do it. And it's, it's even better than having the link. My suggestion. Okay, so you mean the link surveillance from the margins link is the link that's not working. You can have the PDF of all the proposals, the big one, open. Right. And it's away. Uh, Arnold, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, to make it much faster, can you, can you please uh, um, tell us what the comments were on this proposal? Thank you. <laughs> So again, let's just start from the beginning. So it's surveillance from the margins. It was ranked 73. It's um, Asia Pacific proposal and it's newcomers. And are those the comments right there? Yeah. Uh, the comments were, this seems to be a civil society only panel. It would be recommendable to include more stakeholders from other groups such as government, business, and technical communities given the surveillance issue involves all stakeholder groups. So despite that, it was still ranked 73. Um, if there's support for the proposal going forward, I think that's one that we could even make conditional upon addressing some of the diversity issues. Um, G, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam. Um, 
I'm a bit confused because this uh, proposal, the proposal is from the United States, and all the speakers sounds looks like Chinese. So uh, I don't know whether this uh, proposal come come from from uh, Asia Pacific. Um, mm. Seventy-three. Uh, it, it's ID number one eighty-four. Okay, okay. Rank seventy-three. Okay. It's from Pakistan? Okay. Thank you. Michael, did you have a comment? No, it's fine. It's been clarified. Thank you. So following our previous logic, um, is this one we rule in? Definitely, and we make sure that we go back to the proposers and suggest that they uh, pay some attention to the diversity issues on the panel? All right. Um, the next one we're reviewing um, was ID number 12. We already did that. You're right. Excellent. <laughs> yes, and we decided it was in. So the next one is um, rank 84, ID number. Is that 108? 108. Uh, ID number 108, um, Asia Pacific region, hybrid cyber, war cyber warfare and changing cybersecurity narratives. It's a round table, um, 90 minutes. And the comments were this proposal could be merged with 224, 31, or 182. They're all about the same issues. They can be together under the 224 or integrated in uh, the main session about cybersecurity. It comes from, it was in Asia Pacific regions noted up there. Mm -hmm. Asia Pacific groups. Asia Pacific group. So Do we have somebody who's pulled, who can pull the proposal up directly? Juan, you have the floor. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> You can do many things with this workshop, but not merge with 182 that we discussed. Remember the Swiss one, because this has nothing to do with the with the Swiss one. Would you maybe merge with the other ones, but not 182? I I read the comments, and I don't agree in merging with 182. You could put it in the conditional list or uh, whatever. It has interesting, you know, it has. I don't know if, we, if the speakers are confirmed, but if Milton Mueller is there, it's interesting. He's a good speaker. No, it's not Asia Pacific. I, know, I don't know what, what it's there. Just looking at now, that is yeah, a US mistake. and Germany. I think it's a mistake. It should not be there. OK, so we'll maybe just, maybe just italicize that for a moment, since that's not addressing any of the imbalances we identified earlier. In fact, it would feed an overbalance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, Renata, sorry, Renata, you have a comment on this? Paola, Paola Perez says from Venezuela. Uh, she uh, and I am also uh, pointing out that Tatiana Tropina from Russia is one of the is one of the uh, organizers of the session, but they're listed as speaker, so that's why you don't have the. Regions represented. Uh, I, I think we're not a moderator was, on this proposal. I think it was inappropriately classified, though. And, and, and right now, we're meant to be reviewing those proposals that were brought to the list because of perceived imbalances. Um, and I think it's pretty clear that a proposal coming from WIAG, specifically U.S. and Germany, is really not addressing the imbalance issue. May um, I just uh, continue to point? point out there. This is a group of uh, cybersecurity. Specifically, Tatiana Tropina is a uh, specialist on cybersecurity. But yeah, uh, this is the same thing that Omar mentioned. The first proposer uh, ended up putting this proposer as WEG. But uh, again, I would 
point out that there's also uh, on the team Mike Ogia, but I would um, leave this, of course, uh, for the consideration of the mic. Thank you. I think we have um, Miguel in the queue now. Um, I'll come to Miguel and then I have a proposal. Miguel, you have the floor. Um, just barely. You're fairly faint, but um, I can hear you, and maybe the scribes can hear you. Okay. No, I just want uh, worth telling that uh, in lightning sessions. I'm sorry, I had to leave for a while, so I'm back. Uh, the, the criteria we used last, last year was to include the top-rated workshop that didn't make it to the cast. Uh, what we could do this year is to include this short list. Short-listed workshops, and then go to the usual criteria. If that's okay for everyone. I think did that answer the earlier question on lightning sessions? We'll get Jack to look at that, and um, and then come back, Miguel. Um, what I'd like to make as a proposal is that we waitlist this if you would call the waitlist discussion. Um, and I mean, I, it's ranked fairly highly. Um, it is WIOG, which is not one of the underrepresented or one of the imbalance areas we're trying to address. Um, if in fact we find there's space or we find that cybersecurity is underrepresented, um, it would be nice to have this sort of in the wings, if you will. But that waitlisted does not mean it's necessarily going forward. And we can come back and review the waitlist later. But I, I, I think, Renata, there's just not enough support in the room to put it on, given this, this exercise is meant to address the imbalances. And Renata's shaking her head, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Renata. So the next one is ID number 8, ranked 86 um, from the Asia-Pacific region, open source, defending freedoms in the digital future. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> It's a breakout group discussion, it's a bit difficult to do. 90 minutes, um, yeah, difficult to do in the uh, venue. And the comments are, the discussion can gain in richness and depth through incorporation of both the technical community and government. And is that it or is that part? Yes, the topics. And then the topics proposed are very wide and varied, so much so that the session lacks focus. It has no stakeholder diversity, but does have gender balance in developing country representation. How will breakout groups support online inclusion? Any reactions from the MAG? Any argument for pulling that forward based on um, any of the imbalance discussions we had this morning? And my speaking queue is still updating. If there's somebody else in the queue online, um, let me know. Yes, there's Caroline. Carolyn? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, Carolyn's in the room. <laughs> Hi, um, Hi. Thank you so much. Um, I actually had a, a comment about an earlier workshop, so apologies. Um, it was actually about workshop number 12. Um, and uh, which was on ethics and social services in AI or something to that effect. Um, and, and my comment was really was um, if it would be possible to incorporate um, a, a private sector um, member who is actually implementing the AI, because I think that would be, that would give, uh, and enhance the richness of the conversation as well. So that was a, I'm sorry for the lateness in terms of that. Um, with respect to workshop eight, because you were looking for comments on, on workshop proposal eight, I think the, um, the, the, the issue that I have with this particular workshop was that it, was, it, it felt like it was an advocacy forum than a true multi-stakeholder conversation. So if there are, um, you know, if it's possible to, to um, uh, add or, you know, consider additional stakeholder and make truly a, a conversation and a dialogue, I think that that would be great. Um, and then um, one other suggestion, if I may, to, to add to the list, and, um, actually, is workshop number 15, um, 
which is on the, sorry, I'm moving around a little bit, so apologies here. Um, which is on learnings from multi-stakeholder collaborations in cybersecurity response and capacity building. The proposers are from uh, Asia um, as well as Africa, and it talks about really practical learnings in terms of implementing cybersecurity. So I just wanted to put that up there as well for consideration. Thank you, Carolyn. Certainly the title is interesting, as are the proposers. Um, we'll take your note on item 12 that was on um, ID 12, that was one that was accepted, and we'll simply make sure that that's passed on to the proposer. With respect to ID number 8, um, we had two people in the queue. We had Juan and Xi. So Juan, you have the floor. Yes, I, I, I have reviewed this before. It was not in my, my group, but it caught my attention because of the open source. But if you read the proposal, this is a mini IGF in itself because it has all the, all the topics almost. And I think that the, that the comment that somebody said that it needs focus, it's an understatement. Uh, I think this needs extensive uh, rework in order, uh, the, the topics are interesting, but I, I think it's too, too wide. If, if you can take the time to read the proposal that is really uh, lengthy and interesting, but it's too, too wide. I think it needs, and the relationship with open source is really tenuous. It's, it's I don't know, it's, it's a, it, it needs a lot of work to, to be kept in that maybe can be done if the Secretariat contacts the proposals and they have a second chance in order to get more coherent on this. Um, I'll come to G and then see if we can close on this and then also determine how we want to move forward for the rest of the day today and tomorrow because we're nearly at the top of our time. G, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, Internet, you know, security, cyber security is really a very important issue. Um, so I'm quite interested in, in the proposal on hybrid cyber warfare and the change in cyber security. Earlier when we discussed the proposal, pro proposals made by governments, there are also uh, uh, proposals on, on, on cyber security. Um, so I'm thinking whether we can ask them to, to, Im to merge all these important, very important proposals to make it into a main session. Uh, s cyber warfare, uh, possible Geneva Convention in cyberspace, all these things, peace and security, and uh, together with uh, development are the two the are the major themes of, of this time and uh, um, such important uh, topics deserve a main session. Thank you. So I think there's a proposal for, two proposals for cybersecurity main sessions, and that will be discussed tomorrow. So maybe we can bring those comments um, forward. I mean, I think it's... But that's talking about 108. 108, which... I Yes, I know you were talking about eight. We were all talking about eight. And then G went back and revisited 108. Yeah. I agree, but... It, not the same. No, Absolutely not the same. Um, so I think with 108, we've already made a determination on that. And I think to your point on cybersecurity main <laughs> sessions, um, we can, um, we'll have that session, uh, that discussion tomorrow. Um, I'm only laughing because Cheng and I were trying to figure out what we should do with the schedule. And he just slipped me a note that said we could stay here until 8 to finish. <laughs> Um, th we should think about what we're going to do tonight and how late we want to go and, and then um, tomorrow. But let's finish with eight first. So ID number eight, open source, defending freedoms. Um, there was not a lot of support in the room for it. And in fact, it made the list because we simply looked through the secretary and I at lunchtime, looked through the ranking to try and bring some regional um, workshops forward. Um, given the comments which were here was that it was mostly an advocacy and um, very, very, very broad and the comments in the chat room. I would suggest we put that to the side. But I see Jack has her hand up, so I want to give um, Jack the floor to see if there's an opposing view. Um, yeah, I actually think it, it brings a very interesting point of view to a. Uh, uh, I realize that the way that it's, it's described is really broad, but what it's, trying to look, what it's trying to get at, as far as I understand it, is to really unpack the infrastructure that enables um, the proliferation of the, 
of content that is problematic. So it is quite an innovative perspective. Um, it does require work to kind of um, make it sharper, but um, if it does go through in terms of its intent, it's actually a pretty good session. So yeah, I would sort of provisionally support it. And would you also um, agree to champion that with the proposers to get it into a shape that was acceptable to the mag? Because the comments were pretty, pretty um, strong with respect to there's some significant shortcomings. I'm happy to. Then I, I think we would move that to conditional acceptance. And that's one that we really would take a, a hard look at once it comes back, comes back in. Is everybody okay with that? And okay online? And then I guess something stops at six because the screen just went dark here in front of me. <laughs> Just that one screen. Thank you. Since the screen is dark, can you hear me? Does this work? Mm -hmm. yeah. I know yeah. it works, I guess. Since the screen is dark, let me profit from a taken for just uh, to say that I think we really have to stop this discussion because at six o'clock there's a reception. Uh, in the CACG, which is just uh, out, up the stairs, out the door, and then um, so uh, offered by La Ville et la République et le Canton de Genève. Uh, plus, this, this is always important to mention. It's very complicated in Switzerland, um, and by the Swiss authorities, of course. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you. Or should he defer it to the next round? Well, let's just see um, where we are here. We have roughly, I, I can't see the full screen, probably another 15 proposals to go through. Is that a fair statement? Um, to date, um, by my account, just getting close, we probably have definitively agreed I don't know, maybe um, four or six workshops in, maybe four. We can get those specific counts afterwards, um, which means we still have um, a fair amount of room in terms of the rough cap at 80 with the workshops that are in front of us. And um, we also have the ability to wait list some and possibly um, roll some more workshop proposals in depending on the open forums that come in and the durations of those sessions that are accepted. We can stop here and ask everybody to go um, forward and look at um, the remaining items that are on that list. Please come prepared tomorrow with your positions, um, succinct positions of support or not and rationale why. And hopefully we can get through, G is smiling. Hopefully we can actually get through um, that portion um, fairly quickly. We did have, if I recall, tomorrow morning an hour and a half um, to continue the workshop selection. And then we were to move at 11.30 to 1 o'clock for the main focus sessions. And then in the afternoon, it was follow-up as needed based on status updates from the open consultations. And that's where we would have, um, would look at a working groups, best practice forums, CNB, uh, NRIs, DC, et cetera. So I think we do have time tomorrow to, um, to come back and revisit those and pay appropriate respects to our Swiss hosts. Um, Juan, you have the floor, and is there anybody online as well? Thank you, Chairman. Juan? At what time are oh. you convening us tomorrow? At 10? I, I would say 10 still. But I know can there's we some... come at, because also a lot of Workshop begin earlier here. Can we start at nine? Maybe again an hour for this? Why not? I, no, I'm, um, so Aida has her hand up, but there's somebody in the um, queue, the online queue first, Aida. Uh, hello, this is Ginger. Um, I'm assuming you can hear me because I've improved my mic. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm hoping this will quickly resolve everything that's uh, remaining. I suggest that since both of us who are online will not be able to attend the wonderful reception tonight, 
We will continue working online while you guys go to your social uh, gathering, and we will finish up the workshops, and then you guys can just um, catch up with it tomorrow. We'll send you an update. Thank you. <laughs> this is the benefit of, of um, global distributed time zones, processes, et cetera. Aida, you have the floor. Uh, otherwise, I would gladly agree to uh, start earlier, but I know that a couple of us, or even more of people that I don't know, are staying actually in France, and we don't have options because the bus leaves at a certain time, so it will not be physically possible um, to come here. Otherwise, I'm fine. So I, I think with that, it's not appropriate then to start earlier without um, the mag, uh, some portion of the mag, not here. Um, I think what would help us move along tomorrow is if people do look at those remaining workshops that are on the list, um, can we um, maybe send out um, an updated list, Excel format, to the MAG with the additional workshops from G and the one that came in from Carolyn? And then that is the list we will work from. Um, maybe we can even identify those that we've closed on clearly in the in the excel spreadsheet uh, right so that's so and i'll come to you so what we're going to do is you will get a new excel spreadsheet it will include i think it all probably already includes the three from g the one that carolyn suggested and it will clearly identify the ones that we have already taken a decision on from this group um, but if you look through those remaining open items and come, you know, in your mind with a, a clear position of support or not support, it'll help us move forward much more quickly. It would be great if we could get those done in an hour and a half tomorrow and then leave time for some of the other, um, other discussions. Arnold, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Lynn. Very shortly, I was going to raise an, an, another issue, uh, a kind of request to the MAC to add one more workshop to this uh, um, wildcard list, and this is number 107. Um, it has a high grade, 4.02, a variance, low variance, and it's received no comments from MAC members. It is ranked number 81, but it's workshop number 107, and it deals with minimizing, minimizing and controlling the impact and scale of online harassment based on non-consensual distribution of sexual images. It is a continuation of the discussion we had last year. It was a workshop I attended, and it was a lively debate uh, without con well, with conclusions, but also with a strong wish of the participants to continue this debate. And now they will focus on the, uh, a socio-technical solution to this problem. <coughs> Just a kind request to add it on the list, and we can discuss it tomorrow if possible. Well, I, I, I mean, I would just like to show, you know, be open to what you accept, and um, I, I would like to just add it to the list. It was ranked highly. Um, I think it is an important topic. It may even be one of the other represented topics um, as well. So let's add it on the list, close the list there, and then we will um, go forward tomorrow morning and start with that list. Thank you, everybody, um, for all the support here. Um, if we can make some improvements, I'll talk to Lewis. If we can make some improvements in terms of you know, online and this kind of quick voting we're trying to do, which works well for people that are in the room, but not so well if you're participating remotely, um, we'll, we'll see if we can address that. But I really want to thank everybody sincerely, online particularly, but in the room as well, for helping to work through some of these um, participation um, trials. Thank you. And Thank you. And again, uh, I will have to uh, immediately go over. So um, please come along too. Otherwise, you will miss my speech. And this will be huge. It will be terrific. It will be the best ever. It will make Geneva great again. Um, <laughs> so don't miss it. <laughs>